No matter where you are or who you are, music connects us all. We started with a dream, but now we are paving the future. Welcome to the Sound Expressiva Global Competition. Fully virtual, yet bringing musicians closer together than ever before, now on a global scale. True live, inclusivity, diversity, connection, community, an extraordinary array of judges. Get noticed by companies all over the world. Prizes, scholarships, performance opportunities. Apply to be a part of the most exciting congregation of artists like nothing you've ever seen before. We guarantee quality and leave no musician behind. We can't wait to hear you on the virtual stage. Good day, everyone. Welcome back Hello. to Sound Espressivo. I'm Anna Spinskaya. We'll be co-hosting with Margaret. Hello, I'm Margaret Pinder, and I'm coming to you from Yorkshire in the north of England. United Kingdom, whereas Anna, who looks as though she's sitting next to me, is in fact... In fact, in the Washington DC area, Vienna, Virginia, and we are broadcasting today from many parts of the world. Our judges yeah. are joining from uh, many countries. I don't know when to start listing them. It'll take yeah. too long. I've been told I talk too much. <laughs> and the contestants are also joining us from... Uh, as far as uh, Australia and Hong Kong mm -hmm. and Europe and Russia, and many, many countries, including, of course, the UK and the US and the Canada. And um, Sound Espressivo is a new generation of classical music competition. It offers contestants to perform live on a virtual stage in a broadcast from their own location anywhere in the world. No pre-recorded footage. And our panel of judges represents top performing musicians and music educators from around the world. And now here on the final day of the finals, the final finals, uh, we are approaching the point at which um, we're deciding the contestants who will go forward to receive one of an amazing array of awards, an unprecedented array of um, fantastic awards for our musicians. Yes, the finals are being watched by the representatives of 17 companies which work in the fields of supporting the musicians in different areas. There is just a lot going on behind the scenes of the musician stepping on the stage. It takes managers, promoters, it takes coaches and uh, educational institutions, it takes parents and helpers and uh, fans, of course, too. Yeah. And we hope you all will be uh, commenting and helping us feel appreciated and connected. But it also takes graphic designers and um, blog writers and uh, a big, large community of businesses and helpers. And Hi, here's a message. Hi, Massimiliano. It's a message from one of our judges. Um, the panel, should we go into introducing the panel of judges? Yes, indeed. I think that would be an excellent thing to do. And then we can talk a bit about the categories as we go through, because we've got three today, three categories. So That's right. Um, so the panel of judges for the finals, uh, it's very large. We have a lot of professionals and uh, great musicians, world-class musicians joining us. So we have... In fact, two parallel panels of judge, judges working on this. Um, you will see some people giving comments orally on screen, and uh, we will have um, other people giving comments also live in the written form, which we will be able to bring up on, on the screen. Thanks to technology, we can connect all these people from different countries, from different places um, in real time, and be able to provide those immediate comments to uh, the contestants. Go ahead, Margaret, let's start yes. introducing. Yes, our first judge, Robert Vanessa from Oxford in the UK, who is a flautist. So we're uh, upping our woodwind contingent, which is great. It's welcome, this is your first, um, Fine, listen, it? it's your first judging session, Robert. It is. Thank you very much for having Good. me. I'm very, ple very pleased to be here. No, thank you, Robert, for making time you. and joining our uh, big panel of judges for the oh, final pleasure. of this competition. And Elizabeth Mann, also flutist. El welcome, Elizabeth. Hello. You're joining us from New York, I believe, right? I am, and I'm so excited to have another flutist on the committee, flutist, because um, great it's great to always not just hear from another um, 
instrumentalist, but somebody of your instrument to get other views. So um, this is exciting and it's just heartwarming to see all, all of the talent from all over the world. Very exciting. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And also from the UK, another woodwind player, um, Melanie Melrag, an oboist coming to us from London. Mel, hello. Lovely to see you and welcome to Sound Espressivo. Oh, thank you so much. It's a real pleasure to be here. I'm just delighted to be a part of the panel today and really looking forward to hearing these wonderful young musicians playing. Absolutely. Thank you. Well, we're delighted to have you. Right. Thank you, Mel, for coming and joining the panel. And the next judge, we'd like to introduce Galina Ivanikova, voice and piano. Welcome, Galina. You're joining us from New York, I believe, right? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Thank you for having me. I'm so happy to be a part of this perfect competition for, for us. Thank you. Thank Lovely you. To see you again, Galina. Now, other Thank judges, you. we have another veteran of the um, Sound Espressivo, August Antonov. Hello there, coming to us from France. So yes, when I can't play, when I've been complaining about the late hour, I have to, I keep remembering that August <laughs> is, of course, <laughs> an hour later even than I am. So it's, Yes, it is, but it's, uh, it's today such a so competition. Yeah. Hey, you know, well, I, I enjoy it's judging. Crazy, it's a... Uh, such a high level competition and I'm and I'm grateful to be here with you again ladies uh, Margaret and Anna thank you for hosting us judges pleasure to meet to see you guys uh, looking forward to it thank you August for being with us you're a veteran and um, this this is just a such a great pleasure to work with you again today on the final finals and uh, we have also a composer Robert Voicy Welcome, Robert. Great to see you back, judging with us. Hi, Robert. Nice Great to, see to be you. back. Hi. How's it going? Yeah, I'm looking oh, yeah. forward to this. It's uh, it's going to be some some tough competition, but uh, it's going to be fun. Yeah, it is. That um, is true. Tough. Uh, it is. Go ahead, Margaret. Is. Peter Peter Sanders, cellist, um, who's also been with us in other finals. I don't know whether we've run out of maximum judge density on our screen. I think we have uh, for the moment, but the judges are rotating and they're performing some uh, real acrobatics with the technology, rotating between broadcast rooms and the um, different links and hopping in and out. So uh, I'm amazed at how actually adept musicians are to using pretty advanced technological tools. So we have Massimiliano Daninelli, a conductor. Uh, he's joining us from uh, Italy and France. I don't know where he's currently, but we'll ask him. And he already said hello. He's given us a shout out, hasn't he? He has. And um, we have also Peter Sanders, the cellist. Yes, also. I to Peter. Yep. And yep. I think we have one more judge, Donna. Donna yeah. Wang Friedman, a pianist who um, just uh, about an hour ago lost uh, power and internet in um, the place where she was and uh, she's um, driving to a different location and we hope very much that she's not speeding up and doesn't get a speeding ticket but uh, when she arrives she will be also joining us here and the broadcast. Uh, Margaret, it's not did been we... without incident, has it? I mean, if you remember, Liz at one point was caught in a storm in Maine and we and we were just, the internet kept going out and coming back and it was terribly exciting. Um, <laughs> I know Liz was, was probably less exciting to you, but to us yeah. it was because we could see your room going completely dark and you <laughs> being able to still log in and be here and give the comments to the contestants. That's, that, was, that was very adventurous. Absolutely. So, Margaret, did we introduce the entire panel for this session? I think that's everybody. I think we've covered everybody. So what we'll do now is ask the judges to withdraw to the virtual room. Guys, help yourself to the virtual champagne, the virtual goodies. It's been there since the start. It never goes stale. Um, and it still tastes very good. It tastes. Yeah. And you'll need those Fantastic. refreshments. <laughs> you will need those virtual refreshments. Thank you, Massimiliano, um, for a comment. Right. This is Massimiliano Daninelli, conductor, um, member of our judges panel. Yes, yeah, so he's in Italy now, but he'll back, be back in France. So Wonderful. Well, moving on to, let's just discuss how we've got to this stage. How have our, Let's talk about how our contestants have got to this stage. So, 
prelims. You described they the prelims. Yeah, the contestants started with um, uh, competing in the prelims. The preliminary round was live. Uh, contestants um, joined the broadcast studio, virtual concert halls, and um, performed live in front of a judge. And they received comments from the judge and the immediate decision whether or not they are able to advance to the next round. Um, the contestants also had to go through very rigorous preparation with their technology, uh, which is absolutely necessary for musicians to be able to stream mm -hmm. classical music in uh, good quality. So the contestants uh, went through this preparation, then they performed for the judge, they were able to uh, then uh, receive their uh, recording and uh, look at it and maybe make some uh, adjustments for the uh, semifinal round, if, if, if they went forward to the semifinal round. And then last weekend, we had a three-day marathon, Margaret. <laughs> oh, we did. <laughs> oh, we but did. it was fabulous, it was fantastic. But oh yes, it was. It there was a lot of, there was a lot of fantastic performing. Some very tough judging to be done. Um, so those were three days of semi-finals, out of which we have got um, the finalists. Um, and today is the, there are the last two sessions in which we are judging the finalists. And yeah, I just want to point out that uh, during the semi-finals, um, the contestants learned to navigate through the maze of the virtual concert hall. Uh, we're all very used to what the physical concert hall looks like, and as artists we know what the back major portion of the building is like, because the actual space for the audience usually does not occupy the entire building and on the back we have green rooms we have hallways we have backstage we have all these uh, supporting facilities which um, are designed to facilitate the flow of the artists and performance whether it's theater performance or musical performance orchestra solo um, each one of those rooms are um, designed in a way which can be repurposed for the specific of each show or performance which is being put in that uh, particular space now the virtual concert halls had been modeled after those spaces and the contestants were invited to join the green rooms and the tech rooms where the, their technology was te checked by the producers. Then they were moved to the green rooms where their cameras were adjusted and um, additional adjustments were made to make sure their presentation is just like on any stage and done in the most artistic way. And then they had to navigate through, like Margaret, you said, pick up our skirts and navigate. How did you say that? I love it. I said it. we had to gather up our skirts and scamper down a virtual corridor to another virtual uh, performance room. Exactly. So the contestants learned how to do that. So did the judges. Yes. Judges had their own tech, tech check rooms, their own green rooms, and their own deliberation rooms. And those deliberation rooms were completely off limit for anyone else. And so that was quite an experience, a very interesting co um, commotion of overall over 250 people who were part of these presentations last weekend. Now this weekend we have fewer people because there are fewer contestants, of course, who made it to the finals, but still um, you see just Margaret and me on the screen, but there are quite a few more oh, yeah. people currently moving around, getting ready, getting in the position to be um, part of the performance um, for these finals. And it's amazing to see how um, children, their teachers, their accompanists, their um, helpers, their parents, all were so organized and so able to follow this invisible, but really clearly present concert hall, <laughs> the virtual concert hall. Yeah. So yeah, so much going on. Um, the teams, everything. We think of them as our entourage, don't we, dear? Yes, we do. Yes, we do. The, we because do. they are. Yeah, yeah. Because they are. Yes. <laughs> so yeah. let's move to um, introducing the three categories which are um, going to be um, uh, broadcast in, the, in this session, session five of our finals. So our first one is academic category and that category uh, um, people were nominated 
for this category for their uh, extraordinary qualities in uh, being able to deliver the truthful and um, clearly portrayed message from the composer, basically making the composer's intentions understood, uh, recreated, and uh, presented in the most authentic way. That's um, the academic, just a quick scope of the academic category. Margaret, and the next one? The next one after that is Miniature, which kind of speaks for itself, but it's, um, I think this is actually one of the more difficult ones because it is what it says, but it reminds me of it, it, the Elizabethans loved miniatures, those tiny, tiny, but when you look at the detail, I mean, you, know, a, you know, a whole world in a grain of sand. So it, this for the contestants, they've got to come in, they can't warm up, they haven't got time to warm up, they've got to come in absolutely at the top of their game within a very short space of time. They have got to deliver an absolutely dual perfect performance and that's a huge challenge in itself. Because it doesn't, it's very, you, there's no leeway, really. Absolutely. And they, like Margaret said, there is no time to warm up before mm -hmm. uh, before you blink twice, the miniature is gone. And uh, so you have that um, heightened sense of timing and uh, the treasure of each note, which um, the composer put in there, there's just so few. And the next, <clears throat> uh, the third category which is presented um, in this session is program, which is kind of in the way opposite of the, the miniature. Op yeah, absolute <laughs> opposite, yes. In the program, the contestants were nominated for their quality to be able to demonstrate the scope, the differences, the uh, create the puzzle out of a variety of um different aspects and different um, artistic presentations. So to grasp more wider scope of possibilities of their instrument and of the music which they present. That's in a very quick scope. But of course, we would like to encourage everyone to visit Sound Dispersivo website. And the categories are descri described yes. there in more detail in the, on the page, which is called Just That Categories. So, in, so now we move into the academic section. Um, we have two finalists in this section. Um, our first, um, oh, actually, yes, our first is in the age group 11 to 14. Um, mm -hmm. And so we welcome back from the semi-finals, pianist Aaron Shu. Welcome, Aaron. Hi. Good Great morning. pleasure to have you. Good morning. My name is Aaron Zhu. And today I'll be playing Alma Brasileira by Heitor Villalobos. This piece is a part of a larger set called the Chorals. It's composed for a variety of instruments. This Chorals number five is composed for solo piano. I hope you enjoy it.
Thank you. Thank you, Aaron, very much for this great opening uh, of the last day of the, of the finals for the Sanders Pursuit. Now to the judges. Congratulations, Aaron. It really is just, um, age is just a number. I'm so impressed with your maturity and your playing, and it's just really a joy to watch you play. And you also have this wonderful command. I feel very comfortable when you're playing. I don't feel nervous, so I clearly can tell you've practiced a lot. So I applaud you for all of that. I have only a very few comments. Um, you know, this is Via Lobos. We're in a different sound world, you know, and you have to somehow find the, the harmonies, the rhythms are so unusual. And you have to sound almost like you're the composer, like you're making up the piece as you go along. You have to maybe find a little of the unusual rhythms and play more with that. And then I heard in your right hand, I mean, we as flutists, we work our whole life to play legato. But sometimes when you have this melody, just it has this incredible legato through everything um, because you have such a great command of the instrument and I can tell you feel the music. So um, congratulations and I look forward to hearing you in the future. Thank you. It's congratulations for me too. And uh, I agree with uh, Elizabeth uh, about everything, about especially about line. And I would like to um, hear more accuracy with your pedal, because uh, in my opinion, it's some, sometimes uh, it's too much. I would love uh, to hear more uh, colors in your sound and uh, more dynamics and plus rhythm and a uh, play with this play uh, that it will be so peaceful and so uh, uh emotional uh th that a combination this peacefulness and uh, emotions will be pre in present uh, but in general um it's it was very very interesting performance thank you so much thank you Hello, Aaron. Uh, nice to see you again. Thank you for playing the shows again. It's a, it's a, it's a wonderful piece. Um, I agree with everything Elizabeth and Galina have mentioned. Uh, um, they, they actually mentioned the majority of what I wanted to say as well. Um, I'll just add two more, a couple more things for you and your teacher. Uh, one is, to, for me, from my perspective, you're sitting way too close to the piano. You need to back out a bit. That will give you more freedom of movement. Um, and that would allow you to actually be more free with your dynamics, with the phrasing, with everything. That's one. Second, um, and I'm making this comment based on what I heard from you in the semifinals. You need to relax more. Uh, those are the finals. Yeah, I agree. It stands. You need to relax more. Just let yourself go. Uh, be more free. In, not free in a sense of of not following what's written in the music. That's what I'm saying. Um, but free in in your mind and in your body. Uh, right now, when I was looking at you, um, definitely I could feel the tension. Uh, breathe more. That would help with everything connected that both Elizabeth and Galina mentioned, uh, including the pedal. Um, so work on that, on, on those few items uh, with your teacher. Uh, get comfortable with moving back uh, of the piano uh, to have more freedom. Uh, but otherwise, it was a great performance. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yes, absolutely lovely. Thank you, Aaron. Uh, I'm particularly fond of Villa Lobos anyway. Um, and then exactly. Yes. Are uh, we? <clears throat> I believe we have <clears throat> comments coming from oh, yes, the parallel yes. um, room where we have um, more judges gathered together, and um, this is from Peter Sanders, cellist. Uh, that's a great comment from someone who um, basically focuses on uh, melodic production, nice melodic fluidity, and. Um, do we have more comments from the judges? Not yet. Well, we'll show them when they come. And um, okay, I, I believe that's a comment from one of the fans for you, Aaron. 
Um, hope you, you you're watching and please please comment more we'll add the comments from the fans as well because this is just so heartwarming for musicians to know that their yeah. music being appreciated and i believe one more comment from a fan <clears throat> aaron you have a lot of people who are rooting for you this is wonderful Oh, this is Matthew, yes, who's going to be in later today in um, in the second session. Matthew, and who just commented, he's starting our second session. Hi, that's Matthew. right. Thanks and, for... and that's just so wonderful when contestants uh, give encouraging comments to each other as well. It speaks a lot for the sense of the um, community and yeah. support to each other. Okay, very nice. Oh, one more comment from Matthew. Yes, congratulations to everyone making it to this stage of the competition. Um, that was quite a journey for everybody. Are we ready for our next contestant, we Margaret? Are. We are indeed. So our next contestant, the second in, in this category, um, who is in the age group 15 to 18, is Jerry Tien, who is also a pianist. So welcome, Jerry. Welcome, Jerry. Looking forward very much to your performance.
Thank you for this wonderful treat of Chopin Ballard. This is great. I enjoyed it so much. Now to the judges. Hello, Jerry. Uh, nice to see you again. Nice to hear you again. Um, so first of all, I uh, I liked what well, I, liked, I liked you playing. Uh, I found your interpretation very personal, which is which is great to a certain extent. Um, I'll make just quick, very general comments. Uh, otherwise, we can go on for hours on this, uh, measure by measure. But I'll just be general. Um, be careful with your pedal. Uh, be very careful with that. Uh, Chopin writes specific pedals that he wants. Make sure to follow them. Don't improvise with the pedal. Um, to, to me, there was too much rubato all over the place. We're, we're, we're missing the, the, the whole phrasing. Be careful with the rubato. The rubato is there to enhance but if you do too much of it, you lose the surprise effect. Uh, and three, your dynamics. Um, be very careful with those dynamics as well. You, um, and I'm looking at, at the music I'm, as I'm talking. Um, you, you are doing dynamics a bit off track uh, of the score. Uh, so, so if there's, if there's one thing general to take out of all of my comments is to really study the score, uh, even look, uh, you can even go on IMSLP and look at the, uh, at the original score, at uh, the original scores uh, of Chopin of, of in, his, in his handwriting and you can see uh, exactly what he wanted for everything. Uh, so really study the score. Uh, but without, with that said, um, gr great performance. Thank you very much, uh, and good job. Good luck. Yeah, it was a great performance, and uh, uh, I have a few comments. Uh, I agree um, about uh, the pedal. It's uh, you have to look original pedal and follow these instructions, because um, sometimes it's uh, uh, too much and this uh, shallow of sound um, become to be not clear. Also, I like your touching at the beginning, um, the softness in beauty, um, this really, really good. I like your passages, like very clear, but because of a, a, a pedal, it's a little disappeared. Uh, what I think it's uh, need to be more, it's more colors in this music. Uh, it's more, uh, 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 dynamics um, difference because um, when you go to piano it's okay but when you go to forte uh, uh, you go um, very very uh, rush to the top to the culmination and uh, in development section you don't have anywhere any way to go somewhere because it's become to be everything like very loud and uh, um, like a lot of time it's loud 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 yeah you 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 play it well but it's become to be a similar motion and uh, uh, in this music it's quality of colors and dynamics and tempo and rubato it has to be um, really really different but in general it's very impressive uh, what you do in piano but you can do much 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 more, more and better thank you so much congratulations very, very, very nice job. And just, again, such great technical command. And I appreciate all of your artistry. I, I can tell you're a very musical player. I agree a little with what some of my comments my colleagues said, which is, I mean, when you started, I was like immediately just drawn in. You had played with such a beautiful sound and so piano. And I was like, oh, this is the great, great colors happening. But for me too, all of a sudden, the pedals started just staying down all the time. And there are places, I also was following the score, where you have these diminuendos to a dot. And diminu and, and there were just sometimes, it kind of got a little unclear because I couldn't hear. The pedal was not always a down at the right time for me. Um, and I just would encourage you with your dynamics to, when you see a crescendo, 
don't just all of a sudden get loud because then 10 bars later it says molto crescendo <laughs> and so so it's just like keeping some of the intimacy and i don't know as flutists we practice sometimes without vibrato and maybe sometimes you could practice try to play musically without the pedal and see how good you can make it sound um that's something to think about but you have such a great foundation and mastery of the instrument and um if you just think about some of these things i i think i'm going to mature into a wonderful wonderful musician so congratulations Thank you very much. Thank you, Jerry Tan, for your wonderful performance, which uh, promoted for the judges to go so deep into detail, um, even into some manuscript instructions from Chopin's own writing. And we have more comments coming from the judges in the parallel room. I almost sort of catch myself saying parallel world. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah, from Peter Sanders, who is a cellist. Do we have any more comments coming in or not yet? Um, we'll, we'll show them when they come in. And um, this concludes the academic category. Uh, we'll be moving on to uh, the next category, which is, uh, Margaret, you were the one introducing it. I'll let you it start. It is miniature, as we were talking about earlier. So we have four contestants in this category, all of which show, sh who are going to be playing short, but very very precise very brilliant um uh, pieces in this category of miniature and our an interesting concert, thing yes. uh, i'm noticing looking at the lineup of the contestants for miniature it's pretty remarkable we have some of the youngest contestants in that mm -hmm. category as well as some of the oldest yeah. and that that speaks for the miniature being the mm -hmm. um form of art which is um which can be understood by people across the ages, uh, which is to me very remarkable. Here is a comment coming from the conductor, Miss Emiliano Daninelli, and that's um, a member of our uh, current panel of judges for this round. Okay, now we're ready, I think, to uh, introduce our contestants for miniature. That's right. Our first contestant is pianist from the category 10 and under, Kaiden Griggs. Welcome, Kaiden. It's good to see you again. Welcome, looking forward to your performance.
Well, thank you, Kaiden, for such a joyful yeah. performance of the two pieces. Yeah. That was so yeah. delightful. Yeah. And now to the judges. Hi, Kaden. What a wonderful performance. I enjoyed it so much. Um, I, um, I'm a big fan of miniatures. I do, uh, I do uh, projects with miniatures, and it's a very unique uh, uh, sort of uh, genre. I mean, Margaret, Margaret and I, you got to like basically state, state what you're doing very quickly and uh, work through it very quickly. And I love the two pieces that you picked. Um, also with miniatures, I think that there's um, there's there's a big decision on what pieces you're going to pick for a set. And in this particular case, I thought they were perfect. You picked two beautiful pieces that were uh, that really showed off uh, how you played and just uh, uh, the the energy and enthusiasm that you put into uh, the work. They were really really cute. I I, I love your performance a great deal. <laughs> Hi, uh, Gaiden. It was like very, very, a very beautiful performance, and I really like your uh, presence and how you do this. Um, my recommendation to you: um, if you can sing this music, for example, first music, in different, different kind of attitude, different kind of mood, then it will be very very helpful for you and second i recommend imagine that you dance this uh music and it will be really helpful to uh, show these characters because music by itself it's beautiful and it's um need to be more colorful then if you will sing it inside of you even when you're not performing you can sing aloud then it will be helpful to make this music um, um, totally interesting totally beautiful and totally excitement like everything will be um, excellent uh, but uh, thank you for your performance congratulations hello Kaden nice to see you um... I enjoyed your performance very much. Um, let's first start with the <laughs> Zubkovsky. To tell you the truth, I wasn't familiar with that piece uh, or the composer, for a, for a matter, as a matter of fact, but I absolutely enjoyed it. Uh, I could see that uh, you enjoy playing it, and, and it definitely fits, uh, fits your hand very well. Uh, definitely a great job on that. Um, as far as the Shostakovich, it's well played. Um, I would, the only, my only suggestion would be to be careful uh, with the dynamics and, uh, and to come back to what uh, Galina mentioned just now. F f it's a ballet. Think of it as a dance. Have more fun playing it. It's not as serious as what you think or what, as what you might think it is. Um, just, just, just let let it out. Enjoy yourself. Entertain the uh, the audience. If you understand what I'm saying. Um, no, but otherwise it's a it's a wonderful performance. I absolutely enjoyed you playing. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Kaiden, and thank you, judges, um, for very helpful, useful comments for Kaiden to continue to grow. Yeah. Um, I believe we have our uh, next uh, some comments to show from the judges in the other room, and this yeah, is from Peter Sanders, um, the cellist. Um, some great comments for you, Kaiden, to consider in your growth. And. Um, if no more comments so far, then we are moving on to the next contestant, and that will be Selena Zhu, a pianist in the age group 11 to 14. So that's an older, older age, age group. group. Celine, welcome. Great pleasure to have you, and um, looking forward very much to hearing you play. Thank you. Hello, my name is Celine Zhu, and today I will be playing Improviso, a Studio Par Concerto by Ernesto Nazareth. Nazareth is a Brazilian composer most famous for his tangos. But instead of playing a tango today, I decided to play the Concert Study by Ernesto Nazareth. I hope you enjoy! Thank you. 
Wonderful, Celine. Thank you for introducing us to this piece. This is um, beautiful. Now to the judges. Hello, Celine. Uh, thank you for playing this wonderful piece. Um, I absolutely enjoyed your playing. Uh, I am, you know, very impressive what you're doing, and I'm so happy that you that you followed the score as written. Uh, it, it, you just translate what the composer want, wanted to show. Uh, so I'm absolutely happy of what you've done. Congratulations. Thank you. Uh, congratulations from me, Celine, and uh, I like your performance. Only a few comments that probably you need to f follow. Um, I like your lines, uh, but uh, it's uh, you developing these lines too fast. And then uh, when you grow to the uh, uh, loud sound to forte, you stay for a while in the forte. Then um, I would love to hear it's more uh, different variety of uh, uh, dynamics that it's uh, um, must be like more um, uh, more um, um, different kind of uh, sound that it will be not only forte or piano uh, then um, uh, look for your pedal also uh, you have to be more careful about it uh, I like that left hand will be more melodic because uh, if you uh, uh, touch bass line same and same and same uh, quality of sound that uh, we can hear it but if you build this melody in the bass line it will be much interesting because it will be grow with your melody line then um, that's it probably um, uh, that uh, uh, think about variety of sound of colors of this music but in general it was very very nice to hear thank you so much congratulations and Chopin a little. And so maybe in there, there might be a few more colors you could explore. Um, and every, in every of the music, I just want it even more floating right from the beginning. You can, I think you can push to places where you're just like creating. We're hearing quite a few disturbances from Liz, so we would like not to miss the comments. Let's just quickly reset the microphone, maybe, um, for Elizabeth Mann, um, so that we can really hear um, the comments. And meanwhile, uh, we have another judge commenting. Yes, yeah, Celine. I or are we just was, waiting for? I saw you. You played beautifully. I really enjoyed this piece a lot. Uh, it's it's um it's great to have like a kind of an orchestral study and just the way that you brought it thank you so much thank you okay let's see if we can hear liz better can you hear me any better i think this is better yeah okay, it will. Mm. I'll, I'll unplug my earpods basically it was a beautiful performance and that's all i wanted to say so congratulations Thank you. and liz if you wanted to type in a bit more um please go ahead and we'll show the comments and then we'll get your mic taken care of by the team and we'll have you back in sounding great um and i believe we have some more comments right margaret coming in from uh, some of the judges let's see let's see what we have yes. yeah from Massimiliano, um, Doniniani says, very beautiful legato. Um, performance with a comment from Peter Sanders, our cellist judge um, as well. So comments there from two of, two of our judges. That's um, judges commenting from the parallel room. Yeah, um, who are behind the scenes there. That's right. Uh, and let's see if we are able to hear uh liz back here um yeah the the our tech team is going to take care of this little glitch okay. Let, let's try this how is the sound now 
still some disturbances. Yeah, yeah some disturbances. There's still quite a bit of crackle. Nice. Yeah, there's still crackles. Uh, we're going to just ask our team to take care of the uh, connection of the microphone for Elizabeth Mann. And uh, we'll come back and hear her comments. Stay tuned. We'll um, add her comments to this contestant. She uh, clearly wanted to share yeah. some um, some some commenting with Celine. We'll be moving on to our next contestant. Yes, we're back to the under 10 category. Um, again, That's right. another one of our very young contestants. Still in the category miniature. Um, we welcome back, um, I say, one of our young contestants now, uh, Simon Yao. Simon, welcome back. Welcome, Simon. Looking forward to hearing you.
what a gorgeous collection even of miniatures within one piece but um i'm gonna bow up to the judges hi simon i mean isn't list i it's such a wonderful little piece uh list has a uh He's one of my favorite composers, and he has a great way of combining a whole bunch of emotions uh, and just jam pack it right next to each other and so forth. And I think it's uh, it's very difficult for a musician to sort of just uh, go between one emotion to the other and with all the technical stuff and be able to just like go back and forth and blend it together. And can I say, you did it marvelously. Um, I just, uh, it was a, a joy to watch, uh, be able to technically just challenge, it's a very challenging piece, and just effortlessly uh, perform it. And then when you had these just uh, jewels of emotion that popped in and out, um, I thought uh, you just conveyed it uh, with perfection. So, I mean, I love, I love your performance wholeheartedly. Thank you so much. Hello, Simon. Uh, thank you very much for playing this wonderful piece. Uh, you played it uh, very well, phenomenal. Uh, I loved your presence. Uh, I loved your touch and your musicality. So congratulations. Great job. Thank you. Well, what a wonderful performance, Simon. I really love what you did. And I love your lines. I love your trills. And I love how your instrument is sound and uh, because this music based on uh, music of Alabia, this is song and this is absolutely amazing you know what i think that um i can sing with you um this song this is really big compliment uh congratulations great job thank you Thank you very much, Simon, and uh, thank you, judges, for your comments. And uh, um, I believe we have a comment or two coming from um, the, the room of the judges. Let's see. Um, yes, right there. All very complimentary, Simon. I hope you're not disappointed that the judges didn't give you a harsh criticism. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, we're ready to move on to our next contestant. Uh, let's welcome on the virtual stage, Alice Anna Axne, a flutist. Welcome, Alice. Wonderful welcome to see back. you. We're looking, yeah, we're looking forward to your performance. Thank you. Hello, I'm Alice. I'm a Latvian coming to you for, live from Netherlands. I'm going to perform Arthur Oniger, Dance de la Chèvre, uh, which in translation means goat's dance. And I hope that with my performance, you will feel like you're in the landscape of Alps, seeing a little goat dancing around.
Bravo, bravo, bravo. Thank you, Alice. What a great, great picture. I, I could picture the, the goat in the landscape. Just enjoyed it a lot. Now to the judges. Congratulations. That was wonderful. You're a beautiful, beautiful musician. And I appreciate you capturing all of the feeling of the, the dance and the, sort of the goat awakening at the beginning and then sort of going away at the end. So I, I really, I enjoyed all of the character of the piece. Uh, just a terrific, terrific approach. Um, I would think a few things technically I, I would just discuss with you. Um, one of the things we have as an issue with flutists is we're not the loudest instrument, and so we have to be careful not to push our sound. So when, and especially in these times where we're playing for microphones. So when you have a forte, if somehow you can think of that same gorgeous quality you have when you're playing softly, so that it just doesn't sound um, a little aggressive. And then also just, um, you can be a little more playful in the, the notes that have the staccatos. And when they have dashes, they can maybe have more weight. And when they have dots, they can be lighter. So bum ba -dum -bum, bum ba -bum -bum, instead of bum ba -dum -bum. So it's like all of your energy is great, but every now and then the music calls for lightness and you can afford some of the more dance feeling with, with your playing. But um, I really enjoyed your approach to this piece very much. Great job. Thank you. Thank you. I love this piece. I actually, uh, this is one of my favorite pieces as a composer of one of, um, I've always been drawn to the flute. It's like one of those pieces I love uh, composing for. And I just, um, I mean, for me, my, I thought you brought the sort of pan lesk you know, atmosphere and goat dancing and in the fields and, and going up and down the hills. I, I loved it. I thought it went great. I think um, for me, one of the hard points to accomplish is when you're having contrasting uh, uh, dynamics and moods and things to um, sort of make it blend as if it's all one character even though you know it's all the different angles of that character but you know it's a, a different mood or a different feeling and uh, to put it together um, I thought you did a fabulous job especially you know as a miniature in a short piece that's um, uh, it can be it can be um, uh, a difficult task and I, I thought you did wonderful Thank you. Thank you so much. Yes, uh, Alice, uh, this is like a um, beautiful piece and you done is so great and so beautiful. I like your lines and I like your piano sound. It's so soft and so beautiful. And uh, these lines bring me something very, very you know, colorful of this miniature, is this small piece. Uh, what a little disturbing me as a singer, 
um, your bre breath uh, because um, your breath your breath is loud sometimes not when uh, before you sing, uh, start to uh, playing uh, soft uh, parts but when it's fast you uh, inhale so loud that it's a little disturbing for me um, um, because uh, you you can do it softer and you can do it slow uh, you have time believe me um because soft and short breath like like you inhaling some like a smell of flower will give you more support breath support believe me because our instruments are very very close uh flute and uh, voice it's very very close how we are breathing and what i find out when i breathe short and fast uh, I am um, out of oxygen so fast because uh, when uh, you inhale uh, fast, it's uh, your capacity of lungs very short because uh, uh, your breath stop in the middle of your lungs. But when, when you breathe, uh, breathe uh, very slowly and with no harsh, with no rush, then uh, uh, you inhale much deeper and you have more possibilities to, uh, to play long lines. This is only one that um, uh, I can, but um, in um, a general, in a, um, all what you play, I love it. I love this uh, music and uh, your beauty, uh, how you play beautifully. Thank you so much. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Yeah. Elise, congratulations. I enjoyed your performance very much indeed. You play with energy and you play with presence. And I thought there were some really beautiful contrasts in your playing. I felt in that um, in the middle section, this lovely contrast in your mood. And you gave it this beautiful, silky sound. And I really felt that was a heartfelt moment. And I really appreciated that in your playing. Um, if I had to give just a few little bits of advice, um, I very much agree with my colleagues and uh, or with Galina about just the breathing. Um, I often think if you just imagine being very relaxed in your throat when you're breathing in, just being open, then the breath is always just a little bit quieter. So if you can just do a little bit of work around that, just being a little bit more relaxed in your throat as you're breathing, that might help that, that little challenge of, uh, of flute playing. And maybe just as much as you can to think a little bit more about the clarity and projection in your sound. Um, it's very hard to tell um, just across from a microphone, but it's a, it's a small thing. Um, I love the characterization in your playing and I love the sensitivity and the intimacy. You really drew me in. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yes. Um, lovely performance, very atmospheric, um, very descriptive, a real sense of story line um, and mood and location in there. I thought when I played it the first time, it was delightful. I comment from Afghus, again, the same love, the presence, the breathing, the sound, in one word, wonderful. From Peter Jeff. Sanders, these are our judges um, from the parallel room, uh, giving immediate feedback, uh, written from Massimiliano Daninelli. Yes, great artistic personality, lovely comment there. Very nice comments, Alice. And uh, from me, um, I just want to comment, comment on the background which you had. That was stunning. Um, very, uh, it allowed us to focus on uh, you as the center piece of the stage. That was really lovely. I liked it. Okay, and we'll we're ready to move to our next contestant. Well, and the next that'll category be... as well. Oh, that's, that's right. That's we finished miniature, so that's those are our four contestants in miniature, and now we're moving on to the category of program, which of course is looking at how the musicians select their program, how they present themselves, how they present their pieces. It's you know the the constellation and how that works together, and we have two contestants here. Yeah, not surprisingly, um, these are more mature, seasoned mm. musicians in the age group of fifteen to eighteen. I love that contestant. fifteen to eighteen seasoned musicians. <laughs> 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 it just shows the but level the, of maturity we've been dealing with. Absolutely. And uh, you yeah. will hear uh, in a moment that uh, this is not uh, overestimation. These musicians are absolutely... Yeah 
on the level of um, professional performers. And um, it's um, the, uh, so the two musicians in the age category, uh, in, in the age group 18, 15 to 18, and then 19 to 25. And I just want to underline the demand of this category. Uh, it, it puts on the musician for choosing the program, choosing the order, choosing the uh, where to contrast the presentation, where to complement it. These are all very complex topics which professional musicians face every time we uh, put together a program for our next concert. Um, because even though you know musicians might complain when they're asked to play specific selection of pieces for the program, we complain, of course, bitterly. But when we're given, given a complete freedom to choose the program, when, that's when the real problems start. <laughs> because then it's on us to create that collage of um, presentation and to create um, a th sometimes uh, a streamlined theme going through the pieces or maybe some story, um, how the pieces are put together in progression. So all those uh, topics had been handled by these two contestants beautifully and uh, they um, struck a chord with the judges of the previous pa panel from, from the semifinals. So yeah, looking forward very yes. much. It's not just about um, the ability to play well, it's about having a kind of maturity and musical judgment. That's also being looked for here. Absolutely. So we're ready to welcome on the virtual stage our first our contestant in the category of program. Welcome Sadie Goodman, the flutist. Welcome Sadie, great to see you again. Thank you.
bravo, bravo, bravo. What a program. I, well, I wasn't playing and I'm out of breath. <laughs> 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 My goodness, that is just quite the feat you have just done. And I, I think we're all impressed that you have um, put forth such a huge program and come through it really with flying colors. Uh, I, I love the variety. I like the pieces you picked for starters, the programming. You know, sometimes I want Bach in there because it's just sort of a common thing. Mm -hmm. So sometimes, uh, because the first two pieces you played were both sort of solo free pieces and, um, you know, some, some time for th thinking in the future. I mean, you are just a wonderful player with such great feel for music and that you can't teach. So I, I applaud all of your emotion. I also congratulate you for just all of the incredible work you have. I see a tremendous facility on the flute and that's and it allows you to have so much freedom musically. I only have a few little comments and they're pretty technical comments, um, but it's something to think for the future. Um, one of the things, I have a big thing about breathing. Um, you know, it's interesting how I talk and we talk, we never <laughs> gasp for air, but something about doing this and holding flute, all of a sudden we start gasping for air. <laughs> so every time before you take a breath, I would just imagine your body being a little square, more straight up and down, because you're, you're hunched over, you're so into the music, but every time you breathe, <laughs> you hear this gas because you're just, your throat's not open. So just if you can start getting in the habit every time you're gonna to have to take a breath, just calm your body, be in a good alignment, and then the air will come in and the sound will go away. And then the quality right after you breathe will be more on point. So that's something mm -hmm. to think about. Um, the music making, like in the, the, the second piece, I loved your first piece. I really loved the Indian, the, the native, quality you got through the whole thing. The second piece is a different style, the French style. And you might think just a little of not being always so free, but just sort of thinking longer picture because you're very emotive, but every now and then you can pull back the emotion and just really keep thinking, what's the line about? What's the music about? And the last thing, and I'm only saying this concert comments because they're so fantastic. Um, is that you might try practicing without moving and just let the music come through your air and just just a little bit and see how much music you can make with the out the extra movement because it's just these teeny little technical things that like flip this way will make everything just even better but you are just a great flutist and a wonderful musician so Thank congratulations you. Sadie, many, many congratulations. I enjoyed your playing so much. Um, one of the things that struck me right away uh, was that you just waited, you gave us this silence before you started. And sometimes in music making, the silence is just as important as the music. And the fact that you just gave us that moment before you started, I thought was really great. And there was an intensity, you drew us right into your performance. And I really appreciated that. I felt in the Hoover, you really, you told us the story, it was atmospheric and it was intense tense and I felt really involved in the performance um, and I thought also you had a really good sense of narrative through there. Um, if I was just going to mention a couple of tiny things, the intensity with which you play, it's wonderful. Um, you often have your eyes shut, which is okay, it kind of draws us in, but just occasionally I think audiences love to just kind of feel a little bit more connectivity, um, but I think it's a really personal thing as well about what feels comfortable for you. Um, and then in the Muke, I thought, again, we had a lovely sense of narrative. I would say really explore, explore those French tone colors. Just, I don't know, it sounds a really daft suggestion, but sometimes I suggest, why don't try practicing like your scales in the style of a particular composer? So you think, oh, today it's French day, right? So we're gonna play scales thinking about a really beautiful French sound and something that's quite kind of, uh, that's forte and strident, but still with your French hat on or something that's absolutely whisperingly quiet. But really, you know, you're in that kind of Debussy Ravel kind of headspace and you're just thinking what kind of a 
sound uh, do those composers want to draw from me so that would just be some little thoughts um, for you on that um, the Paganini oh my word what an ambitious choice that was incredible and I would say to you um, think of each of those variations like each with their own personality and as much as you can have that characterization in your head and just think how can I bring really to life each of those difficult and quite impossible uh, variations and their personality but what an enjoyable performance Sadie thank you so much it was a real tour de force thank you thank you hi Sadie yes I also I what a, it was a wonderful program and a great performance I uh, I enjoyed it a great deal I think you know when people are putting together programs there is a whole host of uh, sort of choices to make it's not just like, oh, well, you know, does this piece sound good next to this piece? And I want to finish up with this piece because it makes a big bang or whatever. I mean, there's parts of technicality and how, you know, pacing. And um, I think, you know, in, in every place, too, as you're making a program, it's almost impossible to get away from that there's storytelling that's happening, too. You know, no matter uh, what what the piece is or what it says or the composer's intention and so forth as soon as you start putting it next to each other they start to uh, speak differently and i i liked i liked the choices that you made i did i enjoyed it a great deal um, um i'm all the paganini is such an ambitious piece i thought I mean, you tackled it immensely. I loved it a great deal. And you wanted to end with like a big sort of dramatic big bang, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's a good way to go. And, you know, it's, uh, uh, you know, everybody loves the cymbal crash at the end of the piece. It's it's, it's super dramatic. Um, with, with that said, like, the you know, I, you know, the, the other judges mentioned your pause. And I think your pauses... Uh, we're also strong and dramatic and so forth. And I, you know, I, you might think about like reversing those two last pieces and like, even though, you know, there's a point of having a big dramatic, like, um, contrast comparing to the, the, the other two pieces. Mm -hmm. That's, that's why only, my only comment, I, I really enjoyed it. Uh, it's, I cannot even tell you how difficult it is to create a, an enjoyable program with solo instrument. It's 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 an art that's lost on most people, and I I, I thought you did very well. Thank you. What a wonderful performance, Sadie. Uh, I really love your first piece. It was mesmerizing. It was like you play mesmerizing, and um, this is what really winter spirits. And how you do this, uh, it was like lovely. How you breathe in uh, your lines, it, it was amazing. Um, a little suggestion with Paganini, because it's already fast. And <laughs> it's uh, uh, very, uh, I really uh, I think that it's uh, your choice is ambitious. And uh, what my recommendation, um, as soon as you start to play fast, you start to rush with your breathing. And I'm echoing uh, Elizabeth uh, that you must to think how you can breathe um, soft, slowly, because you have time to breathe it. Because when you do fast, you finally exhausting yourself and you start to pick up um, breath in the middle of phrase and it's uh, your phrase and become to be shorter and shorter because you exhausting by breathing all the time <laughs> like this you know and uh, mm -hmm. uh, then in fast tempi uh, you have to breathe slowly like opposite to fast temp mm -hmm. because when you breathe slowly and um, maybe you try a uh, breathe not only through mouth but through nose together mm -hmm. Then uh, you have time because it's already uh, like more ways to inhale. Then it will be uh, uh, inhaling in full capacity of your lungs, not in a, in a topper of your mm -hmm. lungs. Because every time you breathe short, your capacity is fill out uh, only uh, in a top. You can check. 
when you breathe slowly, uh, your lungs become to be full of air and you have uh, ability to sing, uh, to play um, longer phrase with no rush and your body not exhausted mm -hmm. because every time they, you do this and finally it's, it's like a little uh, hard uh, for yourself, for your body because your body is part of your instrument. Then you have to take care about it. Breathe slowly and you will be amazing in every single piece you choose your performance was so so beautiful and i'm so happy that uh you able to do this and i wish you the best luck in your future congratulations wonderful job thank you so much you're welcome that was a lot of music to hear and um Sadie, congratulations um, on getting such in-depth comments from all the judges. Yeah. Isn't that great to hear on every aspect, yeah. technique, yeah. expression, putting together program. Yeah, uh, some more comments are coming from uh, the judges on the other side of the panel, from the conductor, Miss Emiliana Daninelli, and from Peter Sanders, the cellist. And uh, we still have more comments coming through other channels, um, which we may or may not be able to put immediately on the screen because just the program is just keeps go going, but the contestants will receive those comments later too. Okay, we're moving on to our uh, final performer of this um, section of our finals. And um, that's um, program category, the age group yep. 19 to 25. Margaret, you would like to introduce I'd our like final contest? Yes, we have a clarinetist. So we've had two woodwind players in this section, which is um, unusual, but very welcome. And our second uh, and final finalist in this section and also in this session today is Chance Morris, um, a very tremendous clarinetist. Um, Chance, welcome back. Hello, thank you. Welcome, looking forward. Very much. Before I perform today, I'd like to talk about my program a little bit. So I'm doing all contemporary clarinet works that spanned over a year, 100 years. So the Stravinsky, my last piece I'm doing is from 1919. My first piece, Arlequin, was published in 1972. And the middle piece, The Dark Knight, um, was composed in 2018. And so I really love performing new works, especially when you get to collaborate with composers. I think it's really tremendous for future generations. Um, and then secondly, it's diverse Kuzak's French. The middle piece by Brostrom is Swedish, and the last piece, Stravinsky, is Russian. And then um, an overarching theme for the whole program is um, lightness and darkness. The first piece, Arlequin, is about a sad clown from the Commedia dell'Art, 16th century. And so through his sadness, he finds joy and laughter. So you hear long, sad phrases, the little bloop, bloop, like a little laughter. And then the second piece, The Dark Knight, obviously symbolizes darkness, and you'll hear a motive, it's minimalist, Taka, 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 throughout. And then the last piece, Stravinsky. I'll be playing the last two moments. And this was supposedly when Stravinsky heard um, jazz for the first time. So these are his interpretations of that. The second movement is more improvisatory, and the last one is more ragtime. So I hope you enjoy.
Thank you so much. That was quite a co collection of pieces. Um, a bow to the judges. Well, thank you so much. Um, that was just so well presented. And I love the thinking that you put in behind this. I loved your delivery at the beginning. Uh, I thought you gave us a really great sort of raison d'etre behind everything. And you. Yeah, you just you gave us a plan. You gave us a map through your performance, which I, I thought was great. You deliver really well. It's lovely and grounded, and I felt really connected with you right from the off. Uh, so really bravo on that. Um, the Kahuzak, this has got this lovely combination of kind of the, the comedy and the sadness and the parody. And I thought you did a really great job with this. I would go further still with that side of the interpretation. And just, I'd probably just try and use your colours and your articulation a little bit more to bring out a little bit more the witty side of that piece. But I really thought this was great delivery. You could give a little bit more space, I think, at times. And I would make a tiny little technical suggestion. Um, and there may be good reason around why you're doing what you're doing, but it's a tiny thing. Just sometimes I'm looking at your finger movement and wondering uh, if you would benefit at all from a slightly more economic movement, whether that would just give you a little bit more fluidity in your legato and a little bit of ease in the passage work. But really, it's a tiny thing. And my goodness, you manage really well as it is. So great job. 
Um, the Brustrum for me, now that's, that's a new one on me. And uh, I loved your beautiful atmospheric opening. Uh, you, really, you really drew me into your performance. I think in a situation like this, you have to lead your audience really through the piece. And I would just think about that narrative as strongly as you possibly can. I thought you delivered it really well. Occasionally I wondered if your wonderful quiets could be even quieter, um, just coming absolutely from nowhere. But I thought what you did was really super. Um, and I really enjoyed your Stravinsky. Um, I think in number three, you can be almost wild. I mean, it's just kind of crazy, crazy fast, crazy energized. And I thought you could be maybe just a little bit more extreme. That would be just my little comment to you there. Um, but I really enjoyed your performance overall. Lovely sound and it came across so well and your delivery was just great. So thank you very much indeed. What a wonderful performance. Thank you so much. It was like absolutely amazing. I love your Arlequin because what I felt that uh, you are painting this uh, character and I can recognize um, Arlequin's uh, happiness when he play and sadness when uh, uh, of uh, his inside, inner sen sadness. That I, I think that it was absolutely amazing picture that you painted. I love sound in second piece. It was beautiful, beautiful in uh, this expression, melodies, phrasing, absolutely amazing. And I'm echoing uh, Melanie uh, about characters in Stravinsky because his music, it's a very, very uh, rhythmical and uh, the syncopation very rapidly. Then you must be more extreme because uh -huh. your play were like very elegant Stravinsky. But... Um, we need this is extreme uh, characters also. Then um, probably if you will be less elegant and beautiful, that this is extreme uh, giving these characters for Stravinsky. But uh, your performance, I still love your interpretation because it was unusual. And um, I really can congratulate you. Uh, it was a great performance. Thank you, Thank you so much. much. I agree with all of my colleagues. Um, congratulations. Just from the very beginning, just the way you speak, I felt comfortable. I, I felt like I was, it was all going to be good. And then you started to play and it was just as how you spoke, just very articulate, very clear and very, very beautiful. Um, I love your sound, especially when you're playing in the mid range. Sometimes I think you could ask yourself even more when you're soft and when you're loud that you stay in that same core of beauty to your quality of sound i'm very picky about clarinet and um and i think that i loved i loved your program i love the variety um let's see the first thing arlequin i enjoyed uh for me the biggest one was the stravinsky and that's partially because i know the piece so well and i i've certainly played a lot of stravinsky um I think one of the ways to get energy in Stravinsky is to look exactly at the markings. So when you see an accent with a diminuendo and then a dot over it, instead of going bum ba da ba da, everything just sounds heavy. But if you take the accent and then you take the diminuendo and the lightness to the end, ba da ba da ba da, you get that jazz feel. So you find the jazz by bringing out those accented notes, which are the offbeats, the blue notes. And, and you get a lot more of that, um, the jazz quality. That, I was missing that a little, Mr. Stravinsky. Okay. Uh, but I, I really so enjoyed your playing. And um, it's, you're a beautiful, beautiful musician. And I just ask you to even push yourself more because it's, it's still, you can never be too much. And especially some of the solo repertoire, the slow pieces. So, um, but congratulations. I loved it I really yeah. very much. My chance will great performance i enjoyed it a great deal you're a wonderful musician um the so i i can't even tell you how many uh new music programs i have put together with musicians it's in the hundreds so i can i can say that you you tackled this really well i think when you're approaching uh contemporary composers it's definitely a, a piece that hasn't been performed many times and it is unproven and um, uh, it's it's difficult to program 
and I I thought you made good choices. I, I liked it a lot, and it's it's definitely difficult. Well, look, there's an advantage when you when you have like a, a masterwork or a composer who's well established, and everybody knows. Um, it comes with its pros and cons of putting it next to other pieces. Um, in this case, I thought you did really well. Um, I like the, the programming and I like the selection and I liked um, I liked your commentary in the beginning as well um, I think that's something uh, that a lot of musicians uh, forget that has to be rehearsed and practiced and you need to think especially when you're dealing with new music is to bring your audience along with you to sort of kind of um, give them those nuggets um, to, to grab onto, to listen for, and to enjoy when they find it. Um, I, I can't even tell you how important that is. And, uh, you know, I thought you did it well. Um, and, and I guess I, the, let me, more, more, more. I think, yeah, I think you can push yourself more. I think you can go for it more. The, uh, yeah, go bold. Um, I, you know, I, I agree with all my colleagues. I feel like, um, uh, the bolder that you go, the more that you will bring your audience with you, if that makes any sense. Okay. But thank you. Thank you. It was awesome. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. That's a great, that's a great slogan for us to finish on. Go bold. Um, reminds me of um, a television program. Anyway, to boldly go. No, really, that, that's a great advice for a lot of our performance. It's, you know, to have that courage and go bold. Peter Sanders, some great co some comments here. Wonderful breath and sound control. Of course, send a great performance. Um, ah, he, Jerry Junkin was lucky to have you in the UT Austin Wind Symphony. I should say so. Absolutely. Massimilian Donnelli, very good performance. Enjoyed the program he played very much. So some great comments coming in there for a absolutely terrific program, wonderful performance um, from our final uh, finalist, our final finalist in this in this session, um, which rounds up um, the first of these. We just have two finalist sessions today. Um, we've had some great performances again, and uh, we thank all our contestants and uh, we thank our judges too um, for all the attention for their wonderful comments and the great care and um, and the thoughtfulness they put into the feedback they give to our contestants um, because we know how much that means to them um, it is very helpful because however accomplished they are they are still on a learning journey as are we all uh, as musicians we never stop um, learning and growing so um we that's are, wonderful have, yeah have we, have we scooted our judges <laughs> have we got have we got the virtual sheep dog that's the into virtual judges room yes this is wonderful to see the judges putting extra effort extra time yes. in delivering the comments um however we are running in a little bit of a delay here yeah. and uh, we're consulting with the uh, judges because many of them are um, also judging on the panel for the next session people will need a bit of a break no question about it and uh, we will uh, post the start time for the next session very soon uh, we hope to start it as soon as uh, in 15 minutes at 2.30, but that may um, get pushed a few minutes later. Yeah. Uh, we hope very much that uh, the next session contestants are able to um, stay as long as needed for them to be able to comfortably yeah. perform. And we hope uh, our viewers will stay with us as well. We'll go on a very quick break and we'll yeah. be back as soon as yeah. possible. Yes. See you in a little bit. See you soon. Thanks.
No matter where you are or who you are, music connects us all. We started with a dream, but now we are paving the future. Welcome to the Sound Expressiva Global Competition. Fully virtual, yet bringing musicians closer together than ever before, now on a global scale. True live, inclusivity, diversity, connection, community, an extraordinary array of judges. Get noticed by companies all over the world. Prizes, scholarships, performance opportunities. Apply to be a part of the most exciting congregation of artists like nothing you've ever seen before. We guarantee quality and leave no musician behind. We can't wait to hear you on the virtual stage. Okay, we're back, back. to continue the um, final session of the yeah. finals of the Sound is Preceive. I'm Anna Uspinskaya, co hosting here with Margaret Pinter. Hello, welcome back to our final, final session of the finals. Yes, um, this is uh, just an, an incredible experience. Um, sounds to me like wow. uh, star after star after star, amazing. And no wonder the judges are still deliberating in the judges room and I'm glad I don't have to be there. <laughs> <laughs> it's, I feel a bit punch drunk, it's like, you know, then another wonderful performance. Ooh, exactly. Fantastic. <laughs> e exactly. And um, for those of you who have not yet seen any of our finals, um, just a quick overview. Sound Specific Competition is the first competition ever to invite contestants to perform on a virtual stage in real time. The performances, which you will hear in a minute here, uh, are all done in real time, mm -hmm. which is pretty incredible, uh, given that the, that musicians are logging in from different countries and mm -hmm. different time zones. Yeah. None of those uh, performances are previously recorded and broadcast um, as a recordings. No, these are real musicians performing in real time right in front of uh, the eyes of the judges and right in front of the eyes of the audience. Mm -hmm. Uh, the eyes of the world, in fact, because our audience is coming from all over the world as well. You know, our, our, a lot of our contestants, they've got family and supporters from home. So we've also pulled an audience in um, from all over the world. Absolutely. And uh, audience members, please uh, share your support and your uh, cheerful uh, comments. Um, on wherever you're watching, whether it's YouTube or Facebook, Vimeo, any one of those platforms, we will yeah. be able to bring up those comments and share them with the contestants. It's always very, very yeah. encouraging and um, supportive when we see those comments. Yeah. So here we are. Anna, there you are in near Washington, D.C. Here I am in the north of England. And... Um, but it feels very cozy here now in this it's room. It's very cozy. It's very cozy. Here <laughs> I am in my lovely wing chair. Yeah. That's right. We've spent uh, countless hours together here, Margaret, didn't we? We have. And it feels and, and like... Beethoven, and Beethoven. <laughs> and Beethoven. Be all, the all the way. Yeah. And we heard a lot of Beethoven during those performances, too. Yeah, yeah. And a, a lot of variety of music. We heard mm. contemporary music, newly written music, music composed by the contestants themselves, and the cadenzas which they composed. Uh, it, it's just such an array. And, of yeah. course, we heard some music by Bach and uh, Haydn and all, all the, uh, you know, it's the been a, It's been a great more spread. Yeah. yeah, it really has. So... Um, let's check with our, our judges who were still deliberating in the our deliberation room. And I believe we have um, our judges ready. Uh, for this session, we have nine judges panel, wow. and the panel is split into two groups. One group of judges who will be offering uh, comments on air, uh, oral comments, and um, uh, the other group of the judges who will be offering written comments, which we will pull on screen also in real time. So we're in connection with uh, many people in di many different virtual spaces. To me, it's honestly a bit mind-boggling. <laughs> How can that even be possible? But uh, it's got to be possible because it's real. <laughs> yes, here are yeah. some comments coming in already, which is quite remarkable, wonderful. And this is from Neri, and she's our um, member of the judges panel. Yes, Clarinetis uh, coming to us from England. Hi, Neri. Thank you for the comment. That's great. 
Okay. Um, are we ready to introduce the judges? Yes, indeed. And, and we'll so start we, with Neri. Yeah. Uh, uh, yep. So Who, Margaret, I think he's staying in. I think Neri's staying in the back room. Um, she'll obviously be hearing all the performances and, as we see, can give comments. Um, so welcome to her. This is the first session she's judged. She's a clarinetist, so um, it's always nice to have a balance of instruments. Um, and oh, yeah, it's so impo yeah. important to have a balance of instruments and to hear the comments from the perspective of different instrument players, because um, the comments are given on the artistic merit and uh, some, of course, go more in depth with it the specific technique for each instrument mm -hmm. but um, uh, pianists hearing comments from a flutist or a conductor and composer I think that's uh, extraordinary and reaching experience for young musicians especially because for the most part we are bound to our um, studio of our own instrumental teacher yeah. and um, this opens up quite a horizon uh, for yeah, young musicians it did in the last session we had when we had we had a couple of terrific wind players at the end, the last two contestants, and we had um, Liz, a flautist, and Mel, an oboist, giving some really good technical comments, and then we had some of our other judges giving them comments on musicality and playing. So you know, all round. It, yeah, and perspective. I think it was very very helpful. Yeah. yeah. Perspective coming from a composer and a pianist and from a conductor. Uh, we all would like to make peace with conductors. <laughs> oh, yes. And as they are, to, to many are uh, mystery co musicians. Um, it's very uh, important and interesting instrumental to know how the conductors perceive our playing because yeah, they yeah. need to they pull have together. Their own perspective. They have their own exactly, perspective. they need to be able to pull together all these instruments and include them in the larger ensemble groups. Um, Mika Yui is a pianist. Welcome, Mika, back. Great Hi, to Mika. see you. Welcome Thank back. You so much. What a journey. And this Ooh, is our last oh, session. I been? plan on savoring every minute. And since I probably won't be seeing you ladies again tomorrow <laughs> and the rest <laughs> of the week, you two were superb. Thank you so much oh, for thank your you. work. And, and what's mind-boggling is that you still have voices left. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Mika. So, so, thank you, so kind. Well, Mika, thank you for sharing the journey with us. It's been. Thank you so it really much. has been. It really has been a journey. But, yeah, absolutely. Uh, and uh, August Antonov is also a veteran of judging here. August, great to see you back and still oh, holding on to. <laughs> To yeah, the reins still, of this journey. <laughs> still holding and still enjoying listening to great talent. Do you know, I, so, I would, August, I would say you're looking younger every day, but it's not the truth. <laughs> it wouldn't be true. Thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. Well, I'll, I'll take it as a compliment. Thank you. Thank you. No, yeah, but, you're uh, bearing uh, up better than I am, I think. <laughs> <laughs> No, but you know, I'll join Mika in in thanking both of you for for the for the job you you both are doing. Oh. Uh, thank you to Anna for and the back team for organizing this competition. Thank you very oh, much. Oh, I didn't by, by myself. It's a, a huge well, community effort. A, exactly, exactly. But uh, thank you because this is an opportunity for musicians, for judges, especially in this pandemic. Uh, so thank you very much. And thank you again to both of you for hosting it. Thank and the producers. you. The producers. Oh, yes. And everybody. Yes, the producers. These happen to hold us together without yeah. all these rooms falling into little bits and pieces. Oh, I'm sensing so much love in all these virtual rooms. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> and let's introduce our next judge on screen today, Galina Ivanikova, voice and piano. Hello. Welcome, Galina, back. You, Galina. Wonderful to have I'm you. I'm so excited to be a part of this competition. It's amazing. I love it. Thank you for the invitation. Oh, it terrific. Uh, yeah, terrific to have you. Thank you. Same here. And then Peter and Sanders, a cellist, giving us a shout out. I think Peter may be staying in, um, he may be staying off screen. So in the parallel out, world, the in parallel the parallel world, ver yeah. universe of the judges panel. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Peter, very much for joining us. It's just such an honor to have you uh, join the, the panel of the judges. And uh, we have Robert Voisy, a composer. And Robert is joining this part of the uh, judges hi, panel. Hi, 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 Rob. Dad. Great to see hi, you. Anna. Margaret. Yeah. It is such a pleasure to be here. I'm, uh, you know, anyway, this has been a, a lovely competition. I've uh, enjoyed every part of it all, all the way, all the way through. 
I'm, uh, I have to admit, I am super excited. It feels like the big giant climax. This, uh, this next session is my forte. I'm so excited. Oh, yeah, that's, that's right. Cool. Innovative cool. section. That's how we want Robert with his heart. We included the possibility to be innovative. Yeah. <laughs> that's what the composers yeah, want. I hope the performers are listening because that's what they want from us, too. And uh, we have Fred Karpov, who is have, joining us. Do Fred? Fred is joining us for the ambassador section of this oh, session. Right, okay. Yeah, um, so he'll be joining us. He's a pianist, and he was with us yesterday, so he'll be joining a little bit later. Yeah, some great comments from Fred. So he's oh yes, yeah, yes. the ambassador section. We've got two fantastic pianists, and I think Fred's going to have an absolute treat listening to that. So absolutely. So are we ready to move on to um, introducing the uh, contestants? And but first, I want to mention the in the category. The category. Yes, Margaret, it's yours. Go for it. Um, well, yes, we have these categories, and they've been, um, and they have been really tremendous. I think it's been quite visionary to um, not to go by period or by composer, but to actually put these really fun things out there. But important ones that uh, have great me that do have a lot of meaning in terms of what the contestants can bring to these categories. So there were nine categories. The contestants could put down which categories they felt they wanted to be considered in, but the judges also had the option to put them in a different category if they felt that was appropriate. So the last session we had academic, which was about being very true to the, com the original composer's intention, insofar as you can ever know that. I think there's a philosophical discussion to be had, but not Oh, that. absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> but so that was about actually being as close to what you what was thought would be the original intention, what the original sound would have been. This is completely different. This is the opposite. It's basically take your creativity and run with it. Now, I would be innovative in terms of, and we have got our first contestant, a wonderful young man who's actually playing two of his own competitions, but also getting um, innovative in choice of pieces to play, innovative in the way they're presented. So this is a category where... Um, Robert Imagination said, is yeah. the sky limit. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes, Robert uh, said in the last session, go bold. And if there's a session to go bold, this is it. Absolutely. Yeah. Looking so. so much forward to um, four contestants in this category. And we'll start yeah. with the age group 11 to 14. Uh, let me introduce and welcome on the virtual stage Matthew Brand, pianist. And if we can say, Matthew, thank you for your message. You sent a message to the contestants. That was really generous of you. That was really great. It was lovely to see that. It was so sweet. Thank yeah. you for doing it. Thank you, Matthew. The first piece I'll be playing is called Cooking, which illustrates my love for culinary arts. The second piece I'll be playing, I composed in the middle of, this, in the, middle of the summer, in the middle of the pandemic as well. It's called reaching, as if I was reaching for things to get back to normal. And the third piece I'll be playing is called Mischief, which is about three dogs that are close to me and what they would do if they were all together. Thank you. 
What a fantastic way to start this innovative section. It's, um, it really sounds completely different from all other sessions, from all other categories. Thank you, Matthew. Now to the judges. So Matthew, you blew me away. This is, this is awesome. I, uh, I love it. I love it so much. You know, I, as, as a composer, let's just say I'm a little jealous about how young you are. <laughs> but um, I, it's your your compositions are brilliant. I love I love the energy that you bring to the pieces, and just everything is super 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 on point. Boys, I just it's um it's brilliant. Um, I I love the three pieces that you have, um, and it's it's so funny. Um, uh, you and I share share uh, a common uh, love for short miniature pieces. I've done a lot of a lot of miniatures um, in my life, and I just uh, you know it's 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 funny how people think how innovative it is, but um, it is innovative, and the the pieces that you picked in together just work uh, beautifully. Just uh, you know, let's let's just see more of you in the future, huh? That's that's. Um, that's my only comment. Beautiful job, Matthew. I really love that you feel like artist. You, your performance is very artistic, and uh, I love that you enjoy playing. Um, I love your pieces because it's very different characters and very different um, uh, vision of this is two small miniatures uh, that um, I really enjoy it. And I think, um, I hope that I will hear you, your pieces more in the future. Then you develop big, also not miniature, but big pieces. And uh, congratulations. Thank you so much for playing with us. Hello, Matthew. Uh, nice to meet you. Uh, thank you for playing those wonderful pieces. Uh, I absolutely loved you playing. Um, <clears throat> let, let, I'll just make a one comment about the Milo, and I'll ask you a question about your compositions. Um, about the Milo, my only real comment really is uh, to stay more centered, not move so much, let the music speak for what you're doing. Uh, you're moving too much, and that distracts from, from the music. Uh, so just be aware of that. Uh, for your own compositions, uh, well, I'm one of those uh, pianists that has made a career out of uh, playing American living composers. So I absolutely enjoy uh, listening to new uh, American composers. Uh, are you taking uh, composition lessons? Uh, yeah, I have, but most of these pieces, they weren't influenced by any sort of lessons. I just had an idea and I... No, that's a that's a that's an absolutely great job. Um, personally, I'll tell you, I can't wait to hear what you will accomplish as a composer if, when, and if you start taking composition lessons. Uh, you're in New York. There are lots of wonderful composers in New York. One is on our judge on our jury panel. Um, we we have also James Adler and Moshe Noah out there. Uh, wonderful composers. Uh, I, I look. I, I hope to hear you compositions in the future, and I, I can't wait to hear what uh, what the future reserves for you. Matthew, you moved me in just what three minutes, four minutes. What you did to me was just incredible, and I think, I mean, it takes tremendous skill both in your compositions and your performance to be able to communicate something that strongly and something so short it's like writing a short story you know i i believe it takes tremendous skill it's actually more difficult to write something that that small and to be able to move people i was tremendously impressed i have um and i have so much to say and you only played three short pieces number one the mio i'm embarrassed to say i have played some mio I had no idea he had an Opus 245. Like, that's crazy to me. <laughs> but I did look up this piece. I didn't know this piece. And I would like to thank you for your tribute 
to women and how hard they work. So you get my Zola ready. For <laughs> there you go. And, yeah. I, and something is not just one part of this piece. I wish she could have played more and described more what women do. So thank you. <laughs> and you know what I loved? I don't know if this was intentional, but you, the three pieces fit so beautifully together. And your composition stylistically just fit beautifully with the Mio. Um, listen, I'm not a fan of all contemporary music, but I would be happy to play a Matthew Brand. <laughs> so I want to. Yay! 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 <laughs> Very gifted young man. Good luck in the future. Can't wait to see what you achieve. Thank you. That's incredible. Um, yeah. the, the huge tribute, Matthew, to your compositional talents and the future and ability. You have a, a world-class performing artist just signing basically a public co contract to yes. play Matthew Brand. Yeah. <laughs> Congratulations. Yeah, at the back. Well, when I saw that Matthew, because obviously I saw Matthew perform exactly these pieces in the semifinals, when I saw he was opening our, this session, and I thought, three minutes they're going to set us up right then we get we, they're going to start us right i was so looking forward to this and i was not and I, you know i was totally justified Matthew, absolutely you, blown us away look at all these great comments from the judges yeah yes these comments you see on the screen are coming from um other members of uh, the judges panel who are giving yeah. uh, written comments adding to our oral comments and presentations on the screen and uh, thank you matthew yeah. Uh, that was awesome. We're moving Young on to our to watch. next. Young man to watch. Yeah. Uh, everyone on this um, finals of the competition, I think, hands yeah. down people to watch. Yeah. Let's invite our next contestant, and that's the age group 15 to 18. That's right, Chelsea. We have an oboist. We've done very well in this competition for oboists, uh, which I think is great. So, Chelsea, lovely to see you again. You too. Right, come back. Looking forward to your performance. Thank you. Hi, I'm Chelsea Becker. Tonight I will be performing two unaccompanied pieces. The first is Bacchus. This is the fourth of the six metamorphoses after Ovid for solo oboe by Benjamin Britten. It tells the tale of quite a gruesome story. Pentheus was angry at the way the citizens of Thebes rushed around in drunken frenzies in their worship of Bacchus. He set out to prove that Bacchus was not a real god. He set out into the woods to find and capture the false god, but Bacchus had infected the so-called mysteries who worshipped him in their orgies with a madness that made Pentheus appear as a bore to them. Ovid writes, she tore away his outstretched hand, and Eno seized and wrenched the other off. With no hands left to stretch out to his mother, Look, mother, he cried, and showed the severed stumps. And at the sight, Agave howled and tossed her head and hair, her streaming hair, and tore his head right off. And as her bloody fingers clutched it, cried, Hurrah for victory, the triumph's mine.
The next piece I will play is The Praying Mantis by the composer Peter Faser. It uses an eight note octatonic scale, which is also a ground bass, and represents the mantis himself, stealthily and silently watching and waiting. This piece takes us on a journey, filled with drama where the mantis hypnotises his prey, in the central slower section, followed by the pounce and ferocious attack on its prey. The gruesome digestion of the victim is depicted by the slow descending runs and the mantis returns to its still and deadly silence.
Thank you. Thank you so much, Chelsea. So wonderful to see you one after another wind players performing solo and so much richness comes out. Not surprising, but pretty astounding. Thank now to the judges. Congratulations for playing with us and con congratulations with your finals. It was great. I have a, uh, a few only comments, small comments that um, I would like to you pay attention to this. Uh, in Britain, I would like to more uh, dynamics difference okay. and I would like to a little more colors um, and more phrasing, how you want to express because your oral presentation it's absolutely amazing it was like wow it's an interesting story and interesting how you do this perfect uh then um i would like to listen how you uh, you don't rush in small notes because what happened when you do for example this like moment and you take it off i want to hear this echo not um, because it was too rushed and too short, then it's, it's like, oh, um, more musical. Then um, 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 you have to play these movements also musically, also with good sound, because when you rush, it's a uh, uh, sound of your instrument become to be very dry. Um, uh, in second piece, um, uh, it's uh, a little um, like vertical, and your lines, especially at the beginning, pum, pum, pum. Then um, I don't feel that you want to, you're like stopping and start again, pum, and stopping. This music has to continue, even if it's written one note by one note, and after pause, one more note, it has to come, thumb, thumb. You want to say something, then this is movement in even static, uh, um, uh, how it's uh, written statically, Vertica vertically, but you have to sing horizontally. Then um, this is, uh, um, I like second par part of this piece uh, because it was more legato movement. And, uh, uh, but uh, you start again, repeat uh, um, um, repetition, uh, come back to first uh, part, uh, like first part. And um, they again become to be static think all the time through then what you want because your story what you tell us it's a story and see how you speak you tell this this uh, this happened and this because of this this because of this this is how it's very important because you say this story because then you stop music that this is very important when you telling story in music, it's what take attention for for public, for audience. Then think about it. How you you can uh, um, do this in music? Your like oral presentation. Same in the music presentation. But uh, it was really interesting choice of music, and uh, you play well. Uh, only think about it. And take attention. What what you heard? Thank you so much. Congratulations. I agree wholeheartedly with my colleague, Lena. Um, I, I loved your choice of pieces. I really, it, it, I loved it so much. Um, uh, Britain is one of my favorites, and uh, this, this short little piece is just a, a joy to listen to. And I love the praying mantis as well. I, you know, I, uh, it's such a, I think it's a hard concept when you have these notes that are separated by these long breaths and they they seem so separate but they're not um i in, in fact i compose a lot this way where there's these notes where the, there's these spaces in between but you want to um you want to play through the rest the break the the pause that's there because the the phrase is still is still there even though that there's this like it's it's almost an anticipation um, of the next notes that are coming, and I, I think that uh, yeah, that when, when you nail that, you'll 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 see how much that that piece will just like totally come together and bring it alive. And I love I love the storytelling. The storytelling of this performance has been awesome, and uh, it's um, you know you just the, to bring the audience along through through the story is is it's just crucial. And uh, I thought you did really well. Thank you. Thank you.
Hi, Chelsea. Hi. It was a real treat for me. It's not often that I get to hear solo oboe like this and specifically these types of music. And um, I loved how you presented a different scope of your instrument with these two pieces. And you know, you're very charming and I think <clears throat> you have a very attractive presentation. So um, I really, really enjoyed your presentation. You know, I was almost not going to say anything because I thought I'd have really nothing of value to add, but listening to my two colleagues, I just had a thought that, you know, this piece like this praying mantis where they, you have a lot of pauses, I feel like there has to be a little bit more acting involved. And because there are so many silences that you actually have to make music physically. And so I say this even to my um, piano students, the music doesn't end after you finish playing a note, but you have to guide the audience by what you do physically during those silences. So, um, you know, whether it's your facial expressions, I don't believe in artificial facial expressions, but in a way, you, like you have to provide a roadmap for the audience. Um, and, you know, there were like long moments in your piece. I don't know this piece. May I ask what those pauses were within um, the music? Yeah, so there's pauses on certain bar lines between sections um, where the okay. music changes. Okay, so that's really important because as a listener, I don't think we had any idea what was going on there. So I think you have to somehow like do something physically to show us what's going on. But you know, that's the only thought um, that I had that I wanted to try to uh, bring forth to your attention. But I really enjoyed your performance and you've got a bright future ahead of you. So thank you. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you so much judges for such an insightful uh, suggestions. Those silent pauses can be um, interpreted in so many ways and uh, let the imagination roam in there, right? Yeah. But we've had we've heard this again and again, the importance of how you play silence. Yes, yeah. judges bring this up. Silence is part of music and some of the most expressive moments happen in music and silence and uh, working that into the interpretation is the art. And um, I, I feel Chelsea did a great job with those silences, but uh, there's always a way to go forward even f even more and deeper and richer. Yes. And uh, we'll be moving on to um, the next contestant, and that'll be pianist. Uh, let's welcome on our virtual stage of Sound Especial finalist, Marcus Lee. Wonderful to see you back in the finals. Looking forward to hearing you. Thank you.
second piece. It is titled Get on the Train, and it was composed for me by Ricky Ian Gordon. I love it because it takes me back to my childhood when I was obsessed with trains. He sent the music to me this fall. I am really happy and grateful to share it with you today. I believe that Ricky is watching the performance. Thank you, Ricky, for writing this imaginative, wonderful piece and for your presence. It means a lot to me. I hope that everyone enjoys it. Thank you.
that's amazing. Marcus, my personal admiration for bringing newly written music and for the great honor to have a fantastic composer write a piece specifically for you. I love playing newly composed music and always did. And I just share your passion for that. My two cents, now to the judges. Hi, Marcus. You know, I was really excited to hear you just by looking at the program that you were going to present. So I was, you know, it's, it's such a non-traditional program. And this has been a really fun category for me to listen to. Can I ask you a question? Was there a specific reason why you decided to program the Greek with um, this uh, piece by Ricky? Well, they're both pieces I just, I, I love. They're, 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 they're magical pieces. I, I, I love, I also love the contrast between the two. It was, it was ah, really okay. Well, that's a, I mean, that's an excellent reason to play something you love, but I just had this thought that they actually fit very nicely together because- In a way, yeah. That, because I think the Greek has that kind of movement in the music. And then this is obviously a piece about, you know, a train. So I was thinking that, well, strangely, that goes really well together. Yeah. Um, I love this Goldberg Suite so much. Um, and for me, when I was younger, I actually knew the string orchestra version before the piano version. Yeah, you, have you listened? Oh, you, you too. Okay. Because, um, you know, this is just my... Um, thought that although Grieg was a romantic composer, this piece was written in a more of a neoclassical style. Right. And I, for me, I like to play this more like the string orchestra version, more orchestral, and to take it in a little bit more classical way. I think you took a little bit more of a romantic approach, um, but that's your personal choice. But, you know, I'd like to see what it would feel like for you to maybe try it another way. Um, I always like trying to imitate other instruments anyway in my in my playing. So when, whenever there's an orchestral version or string version, I, I find it kind of um, enlarges my color palette when I play. Um, in terms of the Ricky Gordon piece, um, wow, this is kind of nerve wracking to make comments when the composer is watching. And please, <laughs> Ricky, if you you know don't like anything I'm saying, feel free to write it in your you know in the chat. No problem. I really like this piece and how lucky you are that you know him and he wrote such a fun piece for you. Right at the beginning, I heard choo-choo, must obviously be the sound of a choo-choo, right? Um, and again, I don't know this piece. And Ricky, again, you can contradict me and correct me publicly on the chat. But I had this thought that, you know, if the piece was prevalent with that da 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 that rhythm. And I guess if I were to approach this music, I would try to play that little motif a little bit more rhythmically, like da da da, followed by you have all these um, kind of passage work in between. I heard it that way because I think you took it a little bit all like very free. Um, but that's the thought I had. Um, right. That yeah. So, um, but Ricky, I'd like to know what the truth is. So let me know. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you. I really enjoyed it. Thank you. Yeah, wow. So let me let me say as a judge, I think you put me through a little bit of a roller coaster ride. Um, uh, I was not convinced by your first piece, not at all, to be honest. I thought you played it awesome. Um, I, you know, as far as stylistically, I was just like, well, you know, it's 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 nice uh, until the second piece, and you know. Uh, we were talking about in, like innovative programming, and you know, Mika, Mika asked. I, I also had questions about why you pick pieces. I'm not going to ask you questions because I feel like it's it's not fair as in a judge to like oh find a background. But this is what I will say: is that you know when you're picking pieces and their orders and what they come from, um, going first, like as as going first is hard. You're setting the tone. You're 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 basically introducing something um, to the audience, and um, they don't know what to expect. And what's also interesting is, like you know, as we're doing this competition and so forth, and especially as a judge, um, we're hearing a lot of stuff. There's a lot of stuff, especially in this innovative category. There's a lot of things that's coming before you. So you're you're when you're picking your pieces, you're both first and you're in in this giant life program 
And um, I thought that piece was a fantastic, like, palate cleanser. And when you started with the second piece, I was like, brilliant. I like, I just thought it was brilliant. I, you obviously love the piece. I, the, the, the first piece is just, you could just tell that, anyway, you've practiced it a long time. You, you're, 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 you know, you know, it's insides and outs. And I, I, I saw that you know, and you made these choices. And then you saw the very, very practiced, polished piece. You're playing it right next to a piece that's written for you that you're like going right through. I mean, you, you're literally almost, almost sight reading it and, and, and bringing that to us. And, um, fabulous. I think as, as an innovative performance, you, there's, there's sort of an artistry of captivating your audience and your viewer, um, to come along this sign and introducing uh, Ricky's piece, performing it, how you performed it, and even, you know, the Greg before it. I thought you, you, you took a non-believer and you made him believe in you 100%. I, I can't think of a, a, a better performance for a musician. Thank you. Thank you. Well, thank you for your performance. It was very, very interesting and music, music is beautiful. Um, a few comments. Um, I don't know, maybe it's issue of microphone. Maybe it was uh, put uh, very close to piano. But uh, what I hear, it's a lot loudness. Then um, um, even if it's a, a recording uh, with a microphone or performing with microphone, you have to be careful how you um, um, are performing it. Uh, then you have to be more creative in uh, um, colors, and dynamics that it will be very perspective that it will be like interesting to listen because if it uh, uh, everything loud uh, then it's destroy uh, this development of music melodies and everything then uh, think about it uh, because uh, what i heard it's um uh, greek was almost same as uh, Ricky music uh, because it was like sim similar, and um, I'm echoing um, my colleague Mika um, uh, when she said um, about rhythmic stuff, especially in second piece. And uh, um, I would like to add also uh, that uh, this is development; it's very, very important. And but I love uh, your expressions. It's what what uh, was excited about it because it was like very, very expressive music playing. But I want more colors. I want more dynamics. I want less pedal because you're losing uh, quality of, and clarity, uh, clarity of um, melodies line of chord sounds. Then, um, if you um, can fix it, it will be an amazing performance. And uh, in general, I love it. Thank you so much, and I wish to hear more uh, of your play. Thank you so much. Thank you. Hello, nice to see you. Nice to hear those two pieces again. Um, definitely a great performance. Well done. Um, let's start with the Greek. Um, uh, well, first of all, before I start with the Greek, let me say that, that I do already agree with all the comments previously made uh, by mm -hmm. all the judges. But with that said, let me add a few of my own points. Um, the Greek. Uh, my concern with Greg is, are your doubles, specifically pages three, four, five, both hands doubles. Yeah, uh, that's uh, you need to rework that slowly with the metronome. Uh, I'm sure you know how to do it, so I'm not gonna go for into detail. Um, the other thing in the Greek dynamics, I am lacking a ton of it. And I'm having too much pedal. To me, that and again, it's uh, it's each pianist's its own taste as far as how they play the, each composer. But for the Greek, that would be it. Uh, for Ricky, it's a wonderful piece. 
Uh, before I go with my comments, let me ask you something that I think we all would like to know is how do you know Ricky and how did you <laughs> came about to get in him to write you a, a piece? Uh, he and my mom are actually uh, very good friends. So. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, that, no, that's a, that's a great, great, great to have a, such a wonderful friend, well, family friend. Um, as I mentioned, you know, in a previous session, I made a living in the United States out of playing American, American living composers. Um, so I absolutely love hearing new composers' music. Um, the one thing about Ricky's composition, and obviously I haven't seen the score, I don't know it. To me, it it needs to be more rhythmic, less pedal, much, much less pedal. Um, right now, all the harmonies that you that that he wrote, all the phrasing is covered by your pedal. So you need to really back off that pedal and use your fingers for articulation, uh, which is what it is. Um, that that would help you to describe better what. He want he wants well what I think he wanted to to say and Ricky uh, I know you're listening if you if you don't agree please feel free to shoot at me as well <laughs> um, so but with, with that said uh, no it was very well done um, I'm looking forward to hearing more of you as well thank you thank you. That's wonderful comments, lots of <clears throat> suggestions, lots of um, things to think about and um, um, apply or reject. You're an artist, you're the, the one who owns the stage when you're on stage. And I believe we have some comments, some very interesting yeah. comments. Uh, let's see them coming um, from the various platforms. Some comments from judges. Uh, Neri Ashworth um, is a member of our judges panel. Uh, <laughs> That's a great comment. I feel like I've been taken on a cross country Amtrak journey with you. Great. Peter Sanders, a cellist, uh, also a member of the judges panel. Yeah, it is a great compliment to have a piece written for you. Oh, absolutely. And um, Marcus completely earned the, the, the honor. <laughs> <laughs> you should. You should. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's um yeah, that's great. We you know, we've really enjoyed Ricky the composers making comments, yes. Oh wow. Oh, we would like to hear that. Yeah. Uh, Marcus, we uh put our bet on hearing that piece once it's learned. Yeah. Next year. Next year. Or maybe sooner Sound than that. Next year. Well, I mean <laughs> maybe it's, yeah. next year. Sound is specific competition next year, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'm sure the uh, young musicians are taking note of uh, great appreciation from the judges and the audience for um, the musicians bringing newly written music and uh, modern music on stage. And um, th this is great to see young musicians pay attention to that. Uh, another comment from Neri Ashworth. Um, on presentation, uh, yeah. Great. Okay. Um, I believe there is a whole wealth of more comments. We just can't show them all. And um, we'll be moving on to our next contestant. Uh, the final contestant in, in this category, innovative. And how different that category sounds, for example, from academic. Yeah. Mind blowing. Completely, yeah, totally different. Completely. From miniature, from lyrical, mm -hmm. every category. It's, uh, it's just uh, so wonderful to see how musicians and their teachers mm -hmm. take the categories and really make them their own and um, the the difference is stunning yeah margaret you want to introduce our next contestant yes. and welcome our stage. next contestant the last one in this category of innovative is um another oboist kelsey nordstrom welcome Hi, kelsey, kelsey. Hi, kelsey. looking forward to your presentation
what a remarkable, huge piece, huge palette on this solo instrument. I'm just so happy to see solo wind players taking the stage and uh, putting out courageous programs. Now to the judges. Hello, Kelsey. Nice to see you again. Nice to hear this uh, wonderful concerto again. Um, look, uh, let me let me say that to me, one, I think you managed, I don't know how, uh, I'm not sure if you had the pianist record uh, the accompaniment or not, but you somehow managed to fix almost all of these issues from the semifinals. Uh, and that, that, that's, that's a wonderful job. Um, I can see, I can hear now the melodies Eric, or Eric wrote, the phrasing he did, uh, and I loved it. Uh, one, thing I would, one thing I would suggest to, to look at is um, in, the, uh, in the second movement, and, and that's much easier done with a real pianist and real orchestra than with an accompaniment, but move more, for, more forward. Mm -hmm. Uh, sometimes you seem a bit behind, running out of breath, which brings me to my second point. Uh, sometimes uh, when I was looking at you playing, uh, you were a bit late on your preparation to play, uh, at least what I, what I saw. Uh, but look, um, I loved your playing, great performance. Thank you again for bringing this wonderful concerto to, uh, to, our, uh, to our audience and to us. Thank you very much. Uh, well, it was like a very um, beautiful piece that you choose. And um, I like it. Um, a few comments from me. And then I'd love to hear more lines, more phrasing, and more variety uh, in dynamics. You, uh, we need to hear more development in your music, melodies line, and because it's too much verticality. Like verticals, uh, you're playing with no development. You don't go anywhere. You play note by note, is what I hear. And uh, um, uh, I want to hear this development to the culmination, to exclamation, what you want to say. Uh, also, I need more warm sound. I'd like to hear more song-like lines, like you singing, you telling story with your voice, because uh, remember that uh, your body and your mind is very important, is a part of your instrument. Then it has to be a coordination between everything, because your your heart, your mind, your body has to sing. That it will help you to produce these lines in um, development and movement uh, to the culmination, to the point of um, uh, exclamation. Then um, uh, think about it: how to make um, sound uh, this like. Um, soul sound of your warm sound of your instrument because when you start to play I hear that maybe you're a little pushing on each note when uh, you flow a very um, a hard uh, air flow when it's go like from first note you don't have already development and your instrument sounds a little straight I want to like warm and uh, vibrato sound that it's uh, have a life in this uh, sound. Then uh, don't push, make it singing. Because can you imagine if singer start to sing very like particular ta 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 ta? Finally, everybody will be like, what he's doing or she. Uh, then uh, when we start with soft sound, we have development, especially in this music because it's soulful music. Then think about it, how to become not a uh, note player, but music player. Then we will excited to hear this music, how it's like telling story. Then um, think about it. And I uh, think that you you can do this because you, you are a great musician. Then um, don't play mu notes, play music. Put your soul in this music. Congratulations. Thank you so much for playing with us.
Wonderful playing, and uh, <clears throat> thank you, judges, for comments. We have more comments coming, and uh, we'll be showing them from uh, Peter Sanders. Uh, very detailed and wonderful comments. <clears throat> um, I also want to point out that um, at this point, I, I'm taking this great sound on this uh, stage completely for granted. But Margaret, did you notice that how clearly the accompaniment came and the solo part came through? Yes, the only thing I found is very hard for, for performers if, and this is true, I'm not just making this comment now, when they have to play against a recording, of course an accompaniment, accompanist is supposed to accompany the performer and when it's the other way around, you actually got the rules reversed and the performers having to follow the accompaniment. And that's always difficult, I think. And it, and it does mitigate, it does militate against them sometimes of being able to actually necessarily give the performance they would if they had that natural flow between a live accompaniment. So I, I take my hat off. That was a long piece to, you know, sustain that and, and keep her own identity. Um, absolutely and, and bring that through so clearly yep absolutely yeah. and uh i i thought kelsey did a fantastic job playing with that the compliment yeah. and it was no longer um the impression of this minus one um pre-recorded accompaniment but <clears throat> also the clarity of the sound i know um our engineers were working really hard to especially on this different quality of the sound when you have the real instrument coming through the microphone and then in addition to that you have a completely different palette of a sound coming from the speaker on the side of the um, yeah. musician and um, I, it got me lost I forgot that we were listening to pre-recorded accompaniment mm, yes. yeah. and uh, both Kelsey and our sound engineers did a fantastic job oh, yeah. with that some and, wonderful <laughs> comments from Ari who of course is a clarinetist so some really you know, really helpful uh, technical comments there as well, which again, our judges have been so generous and so helpful. Yes, and uh, it's so great to see so many comments coming from uh, this, the uh, parallel a group of judges who are um, giving the written comments. Thank you, Neri Ashworth, um, member of our judges panel for commenting in such detail. This is really, really helpful. Okay, are we ready for the next category? Margaret, yes. we're done with innovative. That was a mind-blowing category. Now we're going to hear something completely different. Well, yes, because for reasons that we don't need to go into, we actually had to divide the ambassador category into two because the two players who were coming next uh, were not able to have access to pianos. They weren't able to play for us. Um, well, one of them is coming they're... from Australia, I believe. Yes, so the time right. difference yeah, is Chris an addition. Yeah, from Australia. So that's, that's already an issue. Um, <laughs> so, you know, God bless you for just entering the time zones with us. Um, so our first, so the uh, so ambassador these are... category, yeah, the ambassador um, category is quite an interesting one, I think. Yeah. Um, the ambassador category is focusing on the role of a musician as a um, music ambassador, an ambassador of the musical arts, and um, uh, someone who is sticking upon themselves more than, than just being a performer or deliverer of someone else's music, but also um, a bit of a social role of um, a person who promotes the language and its potential. We all say music is a universal language and it uh, connects people of all languages, all cultures, and unites them because it's um, a language of an, an emotional level where we all understand each other without words. And so the musical ambassador is someone who is taking that out and brings the audience to that language and everybody gets um, their own take on it yes it's, as i said yesterday i mean the way i described it yesterday was an ambassador as in a diplomatic ambassador when they go they they embody their country and the ambassador performer absolutely embodies themselves as a performer they embody the music Ambassadors, the great point about an ambassador is that it's almost as though their personality is not what is important, it's what they carry. It's, it's, it's the message that they carry in and how they put it across. And it's transmitting something very important to be expressed from one state to another. And that's what, that's what our ambassador performers do. And I know 
the next two. We've got two quite long sessions, but I am going to sit back, put my feet up and just revel in these last two. Yes, we have a we have an advantage. Oh, wow. We know what's on the program of the next two people, and wow. this is going to be absolutely spectacular. Yeah, it is. So, are we ready for our next performer? We are. Let us welcome back Daniel Hughes. Daniel, welcome. Great pleasure to Great be presenting you. your program. Great seeing you, and looking so much forward to your presentation. Yeah.
Daniel, I'm sure you know what that means. Standing ovation. Uh, to me, that's absolutely astounding. Uh, to the judges now. Daniel, thank you so much for your playing. Uh, you have impeccable taste in music, and of course, that uh, uh, puts you know the most difficult music under the microscope. So anything that I offer is with great admiration for your talent and for your uh, journey as a musician. As I so much believe in what Rachmaninoff said, which is that you know music is enough for a lifetime, but a lifetime is not enough for music. And uh, and you know we can study Schubert, the, especially pieces like the Moment Musico, and late Beethoven, late Schubert, and the Polonaise Fantasy for our whole lives. Um, so I just want to say that make sure you understand that I really affirm um, that you are an important a musician with something important to say, and that I fully expect you to continue to take this for a, a very long time, a very a very long journey. Uh, and very long, dis a very far distance. Um, very quickly about the Bach, uh, as a context, I was a little concerned in the prelude of what I experienced as some surges um, that in sort of dynamics that helped, felt a little bit more 19th century at first in the prelude. But overall, I found your, your whole presentation of the Bach very committed and compelling. And I was really taken by that. And I really want to focus my comments more on the Schubert, a little bit on the Chopin. And as I said, these are just uh, things for you to consider. I'll isolate a few so I don't monopolize all the time. Um, it's, it's a very brave choice to play something like the Moment Musico in a situation like this. And I really sincerely applaud you for that. Uh, the music is so sublime. And, um, and as I said, I think you have something important to, stay, to, to say that um, I think um, in terms of certain things about style, Particularly, particularly as we go from number one over to number six. But number one, as uh, there are times when you're altering some of the articulations, uh, actually slurring staccati that are Schubert's markings, I would encourage you to keep that. And I'll talk about why as I get to number six, especially. Um, in number three, for example, um, I was actually concerned about the Chopin because of number three, that your double notes were not clear and you're not always even playing the secondary voices, uh, especially on the off beats there. So just really check your score carefully. Uh, it's clear you can play all of those double notes. You did it in the Chopin. So it just wasn't uh, projecting very clearly in your secondary voices, uh, usually the alto voice in the right hand. Um, in the fourth one, I did encounter those surges that I, that I felt in the box some too that for my taste, sometimes for Schubert, I found the forte is just a tad aggressive. Um, so, you, you know, just consider this, I, as I encourage all my students to do, is just record yourself often. And uh, as anything that I or anybody says, anything that's useful, take it and use it. Uh, it's meant with the best of intentions and uh, goodwill. And um, anything that doesn't work for you, set aside. Um, I wondered about some of your articulation choices in the D-flat section. Um, and again, even the range of forte for the, the world that Schubert is helping us to try to establish, I would suggest that it might stay a little bit more confined in this case, uh, so that your fortes in the Chopin actually have that much more, they're more special to that. Um, in, the, in the fifth and sixth ones, the fifth one, I really think you can hold the rhythm much more. It would be much more exciting if you know you're going, yeah, da da dee, da da dee, da da dee. But it starts, to, it starts to gallop out of control at times. And if you have more resistance and rhythmic poise, I think that's something that is desirable in general and something that I associate with Schubert. In, in Schubert's music in general, especially at the piano, I think there's three main qualities. And that is that you know, Schubert is the, is the supreme melodist. And he also has music that's tied to the dance. So there's also a, there's always a lilt that's ever present. And then you have the third category, which is often some others have said, I, I think of as Schubert as the, the serious musician. You know, he was really um, a profound musician and thinker and his connection to previous composers, including Beethoven, of course, but also Mozart and Bach, as we can hear, for example, in the fourth uh, movement. Um, I thought that was, it's, it's so important to realize because I found that your tempo in number six in particular, um, it felt much more like a piece by Schumann and um, it felt more adagio to me and, and very dreamy and it was very beautiful, but I didn't know how much it was connected to Schubert. It, it really felt, um, I, I think it would be more successful if it were sh simpler. 
um, it, it, it's the undercurrent of the Austrian lilt and the whole sense of upbeats versus downbeats, I think is something to explore more too. Uh, but once again, um, I'm just, I don't wanna take too much more time of uh, everybody else, but these are, these are things that I think you could think about to make your performance that much greater. And as I said, the Moment Musico and the late, late works of Schubert are something to pursue your whole life. Um, and lastly, about the Chopin, um, the, I, in the beginning, I still had the same concern about some of the inner voices, but then when you had that first double uh, thirds and double six runs, it was fantastic. So it was great. I know you have all the technique to play what you need to do. Sometimes things get, uh, I don't want to say glossed over, that would in imply that you had intention, but sometimes I just think you could just just be that much more careful as you as you you know develop your conceptions and your inter your interpretations. Uh, for example, after the chorale um, left hand, the left hand counterpoint in the chorale, the cello line, I, I think of that as much more um, thematic. And I thought you could sing that voice and integrate it more with the rest of your your um, um, your, your piece, the other themes. So the right hand, you, you always give us a great top line and your conception is beautiful and vocal. Um, I think there's more in terms of the harmony and the counterpoint that you might explore as well. And lastly, just a plug for uh, Seymour Bernstein. I don't know if you know his book, uh, but I suspect you could explore more. It's called uh, Chopin, Interpreting His Notational Symbols. And it is a, a treasure trove of ideas about how to interpret Chopin's uh, hairpins and his pedal markings, which so many of us were taught basically to just disregard. <laughs> and, uh, and in the Polonaise fantasy in particular, there are specific examples where uh, Chopin's written an opening um, hairpin and a diminuendo or a closing uh, hairpin and a crescendo. So we, it's more and more proof that hairpins are not about dynamics, which unfortunately most of us were taught and many of us may still believe. In some in the cases of some composers, um, it's true if the composer is designed that way, but between Beethoven and probably Rachmaninoff, even some others, um, most of the composers who are in the know were using it in this sort of way to indicate that there's something special there. And I think as you explore that, I think you might find that, that much more. I've already spoken too long. Uh, it's, it's actually a sign of respect for you and your playing, the music. Um, you know, thank you so much for sharing sharing this, and congratulations. This is a you know a monumental program. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, nice to see you. Thank you very much for playing this uh, huge, impressive program. Um, Fred, I, I I agree with everything Fred says said. Um, he is absolutely correct on on all aspects. Um, I would just emphasize again the pedals in Chopin. Uh, he mentioned it. Um, that's something that, that you need to be very careful. Um, regarding the Schubert, um, and, and I'll be very quick, uh, just a couple of things. Um, number one uh, lacked a bit of clarity to me. Uh, related to articulation and all of this, all of the aspects that Fred talked about. Um, number five felt somewhat rushed, so be, be careful with that. Uh, you don't want to be speeding, speeding, speeding out of control. Um, I like number six, but number six definitely needs to go up in tempo just a bit, um, generally speaking. Uh, the back, well, I, I loved it. I, I felt a bit tense in the beginning, but as you went along, uh, your, prof your professionalism showed and you relaxed and you played wonderfully. Uh, my last, very last comment for you is, I wish you would have expanded the repertoire out of the traditional boundaries of uh, Baroque, classical, romantic, and added maybe some Capustin, some, 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 modern, some other uh, more modern composers. Uh, because uh, um, I, I think you have the skill set for that. Uh, and so that, that's a bit my disappointment a bit, but uh, again, I'm being very picky. <laughs> um, but uh, great job. Congratulations. Loved it. Thank you. Danielle, what a treat for me. This is performance I love. Um, 
I, I will not point any issue, uh, technical issue, because my colleagues uh, already did it. I want to tell you about my um, impression. I love what you did. Um, uh, you made me feel emotional when you played. I want to listen to you more and more and more. And I think that your musicality, lyricism, dynamic expressions, especially in pianissimo, gave me a joy. Um, you're welcome. You are already master of deep philosophical interpretation. It's what I love. Thank you so much. Congratulations. I want to listen to you again. Thank you so much. Hello, Daniel. Thank you so much uh, for taking us out of kind of the competition mindset. That just really felt like a beautiful performance. I was just able to sit back and relax. Um, now, is this the instrument you usually get to practice on? This is not. I actually have a small digital piano to practice on. Oh, that's uh -huh. very interesting. <laughs> that's very interesting to me because you know what? You look like you were really enjoying this, the colors that this piano was producing. Like, I just felt like you were just in the zone and just savoring everything because it sounds like a very beautifully maintained piano. Um, so, I mean, this is very interesting because first of all, I think you're a very mature artist. I don't feel right judging you. It's also interesting because I'm, you know, it's four piano judges. So I feel a little bit like, you know, we're just having a discussion and this is, this is my, um, my feeling um, about your program. Again, I disagree a little bit with um, Antonov because I feel like at your age, just play what you enjoy. I enjoy this music. So I was okay with the program. Um, the Bach, I'm not going to talk about because I really enjoyed it. I really liked it. I thought it stylistically, it's, it was wonderful for me. I think the subject of the few, it felt a little bit stoic, but that's purely taste. And I love how you developed the subject within. It was beautifully played. Um, general comments. I felt like, unusually, I, I feel like I'm constantly asking performers to explore a little bit of the piano side of their playing. And for me, it was the opposite with you. I wanted a little bit the higher range. And, um, you know, for example, in the Schubert, he writes piano, pianissimo, triple piano, diminuendo from triple piano. And I feel like because you didn't have a higher upper range, there was very little room for you to explore the lower range. So I think when he writes piano, you don't have to play so softly. And in general, I felt like your playing, your sound was very fragile a lot of times when it didn't have to be. Um, so I would like to ask in especially, well, actually both the Schubert and the Chopin to just go back to the score and check the dynamics and see how much more variety you can do. You know, the first real forte I, I personally heard was the end of the Chopin. That was the first time I felt like, whoa, okay, there's some good big sound. So on this beautiful instrument, I'd like you to try to enjoy the upper ranges as well. Um, the other thing is rhythm. Um, you know, for me, Schubert, Schubert's a very difficult composer, but I think he's one of those composers that you can just really play what's in the score. And I felt like you took maybe too many liberties with the rhythm. I think that we still have to have a very clear sense of what the rhythm is. Um, and then stylistically, between each of the six moments musicaux, I think you can have a little bit more variety. I think the first one, it's moderato. You know, it doesn't have to start so precious. And that way you can have a little bit more contrast when you get into the second one, which is so gorgeous. Um, so again, there was a lot of precious playing, beautiful color sensitive playing, but I'd like you to explore the opposite. Um, I don't need to go any more into detail about the, the Schubert, but again, rhythm and integrity of um, the score dynamics. I felt like sometimes you used a little bit too much pedal. Um, and also to me, Schubert's a little bit more on the classical style 
um, and you know, very different kind of composer than Chopin. Now, it was interesting because when you went into from the Schubert to the Chopin, again, stylistically, it sounded very similar, though they're very different composers. To me, both pieces felt almost a little impressionistic. Um, and then the Chopin too, I feel like you could have um, a little bit more rhythmic integrity. For me, I could use more melody. I think that you can have um, just a meatier, uh, less less fragile sound when you play melody. Um, and then um, one other detail is I think you get a really nice sense of phrase and just a good outline of the piece. I think you can explore a little bit more of the smaller notes, um, the small, smaller note values. And I'm so sorry, but going back to the Schubert, a really good way I was taught by the great Leon Fleischer was, you know, subdividing your metronome into the smaller note values for each piece. So, for example, the, the first piece, you know, you have a lot of, you know, even you can practice with triplet subdivisions or eighth note subdivisions. Um, the fourth one, practice with 16th note subdivisions. And I think that will take care of your rhythm as well as have a little bit more clarity um, in your smaller notes. I noticed even in the Bach that, especially in your right hand, sometimes your, your fingers weren't quite articulate, but I think if you practice with those smaller um, subdivisions, I think you'll, you'll discover a lot of things. So again, these are just little suggestions that I feel like you could explore, but overall, I. I really, really enjoyed your beautiful performance. So thank you. Well, Daniel, I have not worn mascara for nine months, and you do this to me. <laughs> it's like I'm just in pieces here. I was when I heard you played in the semi-finals, uh, and now you've done the same, but for longer. Thank you. Thank you so much, Anna. What can I say? What if? <laughs> Absolutely. Thank yeah. you, Daniel, for taking us on an actual real concert hall experience. Um, oh, I felt like I was back in the concert hall um, enjoying a full um, piano recital just program. That a, was a phenomenal. Space and we I really appreciate it. We're placed in that space. It was, it was gorgeous. Absolutely yep. wonderful. And creating yeah. your own musical space, your own realm of sounds. I just loved it. There's a more comments you just saw from the judges um, who are pro providing the written comments. Um, they're members of this uh, judges panel for this session. And um, it's hard to well, move we've got on. Another, I mean, I was going to say, here I am. <laughs> it's late for me in the UK. I'm getting tired and emotional. And then it's like, I know what's coming next. I think I need, yeah. Oh, yeah. What's coming next is another phenomenal program we're in for another um, fantastic treat another wonderful from young man, um, another wonderful young man and wonderful player and this is a different age category yep. 26 plus and uh, we're so happy to welcome back an Australian pianist Carl Long Chris oh welcome great pleasure to Chris, have you hello lovely to see you ah. oh that's just a mute Yep. yep, there Hi, we go. Chris. Hi, Chris. Hello. Lovely How's to see you doing? again. <laughs> Thanks for hanging in there, Margaret. <laughs> <laughs> um, so let's begin. My name is Chris, and the um, first two pieces I'm going to play um, are Beethoven Sonata, Op. 78, and uh, Chopin Etude, uh, Op. 25, No. 6. I'm going to talk a little bit about it before I play. Um, 1809 was uh, the year of this sonata, Beethoven, and um, 1809 in Vienna, um, Beethoven witnessed uh, Napoleon's invasion of Vienna, um, and it was also where the Treaty of Schönbrunn or uh, Vienna was signed, and so there's a sort of a peace treaty. Um, during that year, you know, bombs were still sort of being dropped, so there was still kind of a lot of conflict and turmoil within the city, um, but Beethoven himself, who had already written all his piano concerti, the violin concerto, uh, five of his symphonies, um, found this slice of peace uh, within himself to write this um, two movement sonata dedicated to um, uh, Teresa von Brunswick, uh, whose sister he was actually in love with. But uh, this is this Therese uh, got the dedication, um, and I think it's because you know of her of her nature. She, 
he always had a big kind of fondness for for her and um yeah so and then the Chopin etude is part of the opus 25 set um and this one is um just an amazing piece of music uh Chopin revolutionized the etude from just finger exercises to pieces of music so I hope you feel that and then I'll talk a little bit about the next pieces after thank you
Uh, the next piece I'm going to play is uh, four movements of Schumann's Chrysleriana, uh, Opus 16, who, which he wrote uh, and dedicated to Chopin himself. So, uh, but Chopin did not really uh, appreciate the piece, and not many people did. Uh, Liszt didn't really think it was uh, understandable by audiences. Uh, Clara herself um, didn't perform it as much as a piece like Carnival. Um, but it was, you know, in a way dedicated to her. Um, Schumann wrote a lot of little um, musical codes, um, and it was dedicated to Clara. So it's, um, in a way, really interesting how uh, Schumann kind of puts in little, uh, little love letters or little love messages within a piece of music uh, for his beloved. Uh, and he kind of wrote this when, in 1838, so he, when he was about 28, 29 which is about my age, <laughs> so it's interesting for me to play it and kind of live in that lens. Um, yeah, so please enjoy. Thank you. 
the next piece I'll play is by Rachmaninoff, um, short prelude, uh, which is one of my favorites uh, of the Opus 23 set, which is an earlier set. Uh, and he wrote this set about the time his daughter was born, and I think this prelude in particular kind of, um, there is a lot of love, but it's not the deep tragic love we are very used to hearing with Rachmaninoff, but more of this tender and warm kind of love. So enjoy. The final piece I'll play is an etude by Debussy. Uh, Debussy wrote this uh, in 1915, um, so first of all, what had already happened, he was quite um, depressed by the war and was relatively unproductive the first year, the 1914, but in 1915 um, he got sort of the okay with the, by the doctor and went to the countryside to a small beachside town called uh, Pruvi. And um, there he, within two months, he finished um, the whole set, 12 etudes. And um, it's pretty, pretty an amazing piece. And he was um, it, uh, written around the same time as the violin um, sonata and the cello sonata. In fact, the violin sonata was written the year after, or not soon after, actually. And um, yeah, it's a taste of late, uh, late Debussy. And um, it's, this first etude is kind of dedicated in homage of uh, uh, Cherny. And so there's a sort of a kind of fun 
kind of beginning where it's like a you know beginner student trying to learn piano and then the BC takes over and there's a lot of colors and it's a magnificent piece enjoy Getting a standing ovation here. Thank you. I, I hope you realize. The program before. <laughs> you have to hear it again. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, this is an incredible program, and uh, what a treat! A full recital. Um, I mean, Daniel and Chris, you gave us such an <laughs> enormous pleasure. Um, I forgot that we are, um, Chris, that we are 15 hours apart. Oh, that that's it's, okay. It's, yeah, it's Sunday uh, where you are, and probably morning, and yeah. um, it's uh, um, you just immersed me in this uh, incredible program. Oh, now to you. the judges. Yeah. Oh, look at this. They don't even give us a moment to digest our food. <laughs> <laughs> like, why can't I just clap and be done with it? <laughs> I mean, that's a lot. That was just a lot. <laughs> um, <coughs> Yeah, Chris, I really appreciate it. You actually, you spoke between the pieces just to give us a little, like a palate cleanser, <laughs> because I, emotionally it's just a lot. Um, 
Well, yes, you are an ambassador. I can see why you were chosen for this category. You are perfect. I could hear you speak with that Australian accent for hours. <laughs> You're just a <laughs> likable person. And Thank I you. have no doubt that you will continue to represent music in a really positive way. You know, you spoke that you were about the same age as Schumann was when he wrote his piece, but um, you seem a little bit too well adjusted to quite compare yourself. <laughs> 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 you just seem like a really nice guy. Um, well, um, I guess I'm supposed to share something. Um, I guess, again, sorry to repeat myself and I don't want to come across as so rigid, but I'm all about rhythm. I guess you know, something I'd like you to keep exploring if you haven't yet already is, you know, I, I've talked so often about the subdivisions on the metronome, especially in Beethoven. I feel like I lost um, a sense of pulse. It felt a little bit freestyle. And I think if you set your metronome to 16th notes, um, I'm just going to have you try that. And I feel like you'll discover a lot of things. Yeah. It actually, I, actually it fixes a lot of technical problems too, you know, because you'll find yourself being much more efficient with your movements as well. Um, like, you know, the very end of the, um, by the way, thank you for playing the sonata. It's so rarely played, especially in a competition format. It was, the whole program was lovely. I really, really enjoyed it. Um, the end of the, um, the first movement, I mean, the, the second movement, when mm. you have the 16th notes, da, 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 da. again, if you set it to 16th notes, you'll discover that it's just continuous 16th notes, right? It's not yeah. left, left, right? Um, oh, one other little thing, I felt like you could wait a little bit more between the first and second, the second movement, I, I feel it could yeah. be a little bit faster. Again, these are just, you know, you're a seasoned artist. Um, just something. <laughs> um, well, what am I supposed to say about the Chopin? I reveals a lot. You're a very brave guy. <laughs> so good for you for even playing it. There are so many stories regarding that etude, right? There's one story, um, I'm not going to name him, but a friend of mine, who is a Juilliard alumni and apparently he's a practical joker and he put a plastic hand on top of the piano so that, and then he used both hands and thirds. And then there's this story, I think it was Rubenstein. He explained how do you practice this etude first week, slowly top line, da, 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 da. Second week, a little faster, da, 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 da. Next week, bottom, a little slower, go on like that. And then at the performance, <laughs> so basically you don't play it but you know you, play <coughs> you did a great job and i loved um your use of the pedal i liked your pedal generally in all of your playing i thought it thank was you useful. um wow schumann beautiful piece he i mean really was like the john legend of the time right i mean <laughs> all these love letters to his wife um i really felt especially the third and fourth um uh, movements, you really got warmed up and you did some really beautiful things. Same thing in the Schumann as well as the Rachmaninoff. I want you to try exploring the smaller note values. I feel like maybe you lead often solely with the melody and I think you can explore leading more with the inner voices. And if this goes for chamber music too, I think the, the top melody line, it's so much easier and smoother to play if the bottom strings, the bottom line are, you know, it's, it's led by the lower lines. Um, and uh, Debussy, all I can say is um, starting from your C major skill, you've learned how to play the piano. <laughs> 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 I've improved a lot since then. <laughs> yeah. That was really enjoyable. Thank you. I really appreciate your comments. Thank you. Thank you so much. Chris, thanks so much for your playing. This is a huge program, especially to go, you know, with minimal breaks. And I, as Mika said, I appreciated your uh, interludes. And, and uh, anything I say is with affirmation for you as an artist. And I like the idea of ambassador as well. Um, for whatever it's worth, I'll just offer things in sort of chronological order. Uh, my first disclaimer would be, and it, it feels almost snooty to say something like this, but uh, let's put it this way. I look forward to when you have another instrument to present this on, because I think you would uh, you know, ha be able to take advantage of a, a wider range of sound. And there are times that I think my comments may have been influenced by uh, limitations perhaps by, by the Kauai. Um, 
the um, starting with the Beethoven, something to consider in general, but in this place in particular, you know, this is adagio cantabile. So it's at ease, but it's not largo or grave. And I really think that your conception of this is considerably um, below uh, yeah. adagio. And, and that actually makes it harder to have cantabile too. So um, I would, I'll just offer that and say, I would look at that in really throughout the Beethoven literature and, okay. and think about the various uh, criteria that help you to choose tempi like that. Adagios are often played on the too slow side, I often think. Um, yeah. I thought your tempo in the Allegro is really good, the Manon Troppo. In the couple of things I wrote was in the de development, be careful of your inflection. This happened a couple times through the program, but sometimes you might kick releases or like in the main, a curious thing happened when you played the repeat in the main theme of the octaves, um, they felt vertical the first time. And then on the repeat, it was much better. It was almost like you were um, warming more to your own instrument. Um, something I uh, often found also to consider was about phrase centers. So that's all tied in with inflection. Sometimes the way that you're interpreting the markings of Beethoven in particular, but also some of the other composers, like you might go to the, there's a quarter note slur before there's a half note, um, uh, sforzando, so you might go di da da, mm. and and I wonder if in fact that actually goes di da da. So yeah. you're still getting the agogic for the sforzando, but you're not making it a separate event. That happened in the Schumann a few times too. Like you would separate something that I felt the composer was actually leading us to. So something you can consider uh, about that. Um, in the another thing to beware of, I think for my taste is. Um, what I call rubato, rubato mannerisms. And so a place where this would show up, um, there's a couple of them, but I'll give you examples and you can see where you might apply them. Um, in the recap of the Beethoven, you do something personal at the high thing when you're making the transition to E major. But when you play the repeat, it sounded exactly the same. And, and so you're already doing something that's sort of special. So then it becomes premeditated, which means it leads us towards being like, it's predictable. So anything you can do to avoid that, I highly, highly encourage you to watch out for bottom mannerisms. Um, and in the this last movement, I just thought there was a, I had a tad sensation of effort. And so I would, I would do some really fast sort of, we call it going to the factory work, you know, some really, you know, but 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 you know, doing more short group practice, um, okay. Uh, I also, I share a connection with Mika to working with Leon Fleischer extensively. So being all about rhythm actually is, is, is my as well, although I'm thinking more of the macro rhythm and then how you, um, I love how Mr. Fleischer would tell us to, that the secret of rhythmic playing is to play as late as possible while still playing in time. And so I think if you can do that in your practice too, including those places I was talking about earlier to propel us forward and know where your real phrase centers are, it's going to be that much more compelling. And again, if it, in case you needed this, this is all in the backdrop that you are a very talented and worthy artist. Uh, your Chopin, by the way, I could empathize with. I thought it was really quite good. And I admired your cascading uh, thirds. I've always struggled with the second ones that come down, the dita, 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 the ones my hands just don't want to go in there. But you nailed almost, almost all of them, so bravo. Uh, <laughs> in the um, Chrysleriana, um, I remember once uh, talking to somebody who said that they, they wanted to tune the piano to all of the, make D the top note for all the notes <laughs> above there. But, <laughs> but you, handled, you handled that very well. Um, and uh, I, I wrote something about pedaling and releases. And there were times that I thought you could explore more with partial pedals in this and some of the other pieces, but I thought it might be related to your piano at some places. Um, I'm blabbing on, but I'll go on to number two and say that um, in a, a principle I, I like is to start with something simplicit with simplicity first. And, and when you have a piece that's actually 10 to 11 minutes long, which number two is, yeah. you, you came out and gave us quite a bit of rubato in the opening phrase. And then sometimes you do it the same way. Di da di da. No, di da di da. No, wait, I think you went. Di da di da. Di da di da da. Then then you might do it the same way. It's like, mm. you know, I think you might want to think about how those hairpins are. And if you come out simpler the first time, which curiously you did it more simply sometimes later, <laughs> I thought you might do that the first time. 
And then you have a, a journey to unfold that's not, it, you know, because you can, I'm not saying this is what I thought, but you could be accused of it being self-indulgent if you're not careful. Yeah, I worry about that. Thank you. <laughs> so, um, but in that really nice voicing in the tenor voice before the first intermezzo, um, right before the first intermezzo was another one of those spots where you did one of those abrupt uh, stops before the arrival. So you can check that in oh, the store. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, um, and then I just thought the uh, intermezzo one, for example, could be more playful. There was more Floristan energy that I thought you could uh, exploit. And the uh, something about just what is the meaning of hairpins, I think, could be a whole other topic. But I'm already, I'm sure I, somebody wants to pull me off at the, I'm going to get the hook soon. So uh, just vocal inflection versus the metric hierarchy, I think, is something you should uh, consider more. Number three and four, I agree with Mika that they were, um, I found them more compelling as well, partly for the example, the reasons I stated earlier about number two. Um, at uh, Noch Schnelle, uh, he does, Schumann does write with more, with pedal there. And I thought that was another example of where you could experiment with mm -hmm. partial pedals. Um, the uh, G minor, where he writes the linka hand, the da 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 da, that was another example where you did a pause exactly the same way again. So you did it like, you did it, it, like check that off your list. You did another one, you checked it, you know. So if you can find a way to do more proportional at cello rondo and retardando, I think it'll come out more naturally and simply in the end. And then you're telling a story that's more continuous and less sort of intellectual, I guess. Um, okay, um, I, I promise my rest of my comments are short, everybody. Um, Rachmaninoff 23, number six is, um, for my taste, I thought it needed to be more legato. Um, it, it could be much more fluid um, vocal inflection. The, the, I didn't, you, you did better with that, I thought before, but I didn't, I feel like, um, I would I would go back to playing with the octaves with two hands as beautifully as you possibly can and then play it and match that sound uh, so that it doesn't get that sort of octave technique uh, feeling. And, the, you know, th that is a uniquely weird piece in Rachmaninoff's output, I think, because it's a four page prelude and the climax is on the second page. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and the rest of it's all falling action. But in fact, I, I, was, I didn't feel satisfied by that climax because you actually pushed all the way through it. And it was like, that's the place that I thought it could expand and really blossom there. And then you could take us to the end. And again, there were possibilities for partial pedals there as well. And the, very, very short on the WC. I thought it was well played. I thought maybe take a few more chances. I mean, he does write sagement, you know, wisely. And I, I thought that was, uh, there, there's, there's an idea to me that it could be funnier, I think. There's, there's the, Debussy is one of the few composers, along with Beethoven, by the way, who, who I consider people who really knew how to capture humor, which is such a difficult thing to do in music. And I think when you have it, and if you're gonna present a tremendously serious program like this, the more you can provide variety. Uh, you know, it was actually your teacher said to me at, uh, after uh, uh, semifinals in Dublin, um, he said, you know, I played Schumann and he said, uh, you should, he said in a way, what, he, he accused me of playing, quote, too beautifully. And he said, if you had played more aggressively in the more Floristan movements, he said something like, you would have had us eating out of your hand. And I've often thought about that. And it was it was uh, very helpful. You can say hello to me, for me, for to Mr. Perry. Um, and um, I, I think that, that you can explore those sort of colors as well. I apologize to everyone uh, for taking too much time on to uh, the next person. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. <laughs> Hello. Nice to meet you. <clears throat> uh, I absolutely loved your performance. Uh, huge program. I concur with both Mika and Fred on their comments. So I'm not going to talk much about technique or anything. However, I'm going to address your presentation a bit. Um, I loved how you spoke about each piece, um, but to me, you felt a bit nervous about doing that. And I know it's a bit tricky or doing it in, in front of a camera without an audience to respond to, to, to your comments and anything of that nature. Um, one thing I would like to encourage you to do uh, is to check out uh, a book called Lessons with Kumi. Uh, okay. It's a book written by Michael Colgrass. Uh, an American composer who passed away a few years back, um, who who talks about um, how to talk in front of an audience or in front of a camera in order to to uh, to, tra to to transfer whatever you want to say 
feeling confident. Um, okay. I, 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 you know, from my point of view, it felt just a bit, a, a bit off uh, when you are talking a bit uh, pulsating, yeah. crowd pulsation. <laughs> yeah, which is perfectly normal. But uh, I would suggest you look at that book. Uh, that would help you in the future uh, because this is something that we absolutely enjoy hearing the history of uh, of yeah. various uh, uh, of the pieces that 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 we play and should be done more often so but uh, with that said congratulations i loved it thank you very much i appreciate that thank you very much oh. you're muted <laughs> That's easy to fix. Thanks for letting me know. <laughs> Thank you so much, Chris, for presenting such a beautiful and full program and for presenting the um, interludes with your um, speech in between the pieces and for, um, uh, I would say, provoking our judges to um, want to keep talking to you and uh, wanting to share more and more of their advice uh, you're such a warm artist. It um, makes me want to um, help you in any way I can too. <laughs> yes. And we have some comments from uh, the judges from our parallel room. And um, these are comments from Mary Ashworth. Something to consider. But, but praising, yeah, yes. looking into the but direct. Praising Chris as an ambassador which I think we, do, we, we are absolutely, absolutely. concur with that. Absolutely. Yeah. Wonderful. So if Daniel left me feeling slightly emotional, Chris and... left me with a real smile because the wit in that Debussy and Fred just mentioned about the humour. And, yeah. Um, and I felt the Debussy, there was that char charming humour, kind of wry, rather dry humor in the TV, so it was great. Yeah, what a great. wonderful what a wonderful way to uh, finish a very serious program and a very serious competition. We're coming to an end of all the performances <gasps> in all the rounds. What are we going to do with ourselves now when it's over? Oh, yeah. uh, we're going to start planning the next one. <laughs> okay. Okay. Can, I, can we have a couple of days off the end? But yes, it's just, it's been I, amazing. It's been absolutely amazing, and the energy and the power and the beauty, uh, preparation, everything the contestants brought to the stage <coughs> are, are just purely, oh. purely astounding. And um, the expertise, the sharing, the generosity of the judges with their comments, and um, it's just... I've learned um, so much. I have learned so much listening to the judges. I really have. It's been wonderful. Yeah, I felt like I'm back in my conservatory days when, uh, you know, the, the, the thought is always organized <laughs> and always a check. But I uh, think the word, you're right, generosity. I think that's the word that actually marks this competition. I have to say, if there's one word I'll take away, it's that, it's generosity. And I think that's the thing that marks music as its best. Well, that's what music is supposed to be about, generosity of sharing the um, talent, the dedication, the work, and the love. Uh, music yeah. is a, is a art of generosity. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I absolutely agree. And I think it's just been embodied over all the days we've done it, one way or another. Wonderful, just wonderful. I can see that our judges are, are leaving the broadcast room and moving to the uh, dedication room um, for deliberations. And this has been a tremendously intense experience. Here is more comments from Peter Sanders, the uh, cello that? judge. Oh, it's for us! Oh, it's for us. oh thank you, Peter. Yeah. <laughs> this is wonderful. Yes. And um, the comment that hasn't gone up is enough already. Exactly. Well, it's coming. It's, it's coming. about to come here. And yeah. um, to always conclude, leave the, always leave the party when you're having the most fun. Absolutely. That's what we're <laughs> going to do. That's what we're going to do. With this, we're going to say many thanks. Many to thanks to all of you who participated. Oh. Thanks to our tech team. Thanks to our judges. Thanks to our contestants. Thanks to you, my dear. 
And to you, my dear, for being such a great sport. <laughs> Yay! Oh, it's like the Sistine Chapel. Yes, there we go. Hang on, let me get my hand. Oh, there we go. Yes. It's this way. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> exactly. And um, thank you all for watching and supporting and commenting. Yes. And I want to do one more big shout out to the guys in the back who maintained those endless streams, maintained the tech and helped everyone who had some occasional uh, issues with their microphones or something happened. Half of it They've even went unnoticed by us. Thank you, guys. These are professional musicians who learned a whole new art of presenting our music to the world during this difficult times of pandemic. Yeah. When I love them especially. They're the bass players. We're the guys. We're the engine room. We keep the show on the road. Absolutely. Nobody, nobody notices us. They're too busy looking at the violins. Or, ah, really. But we're the guys that know. We're the ones that keep the show on the road. Well, that's what Mika said. The lower voices are the ones which are moving the music forward and carrying yeah. the ship of the beautiful melody on its waves. Keep the mu mu music moving, keep it going, continue to do what we love and cherish and value. And keep that's the music what... live, keep the music alive, go bold, be there, be generous, be creative, keep the music there. And with that, we're ready to conclude the last of the sessions of yeah. the finals of the Sound is Perceived competition. Yeah. We'll see you at the announcement of the results yep. That's gonna tomorrow be at noon. And we will see you back uh, again at the uh, award ceremony of the prizes next Saturday. That'll be December 19th, again at noon, Easter Standard Time. And that'll be our presentation of awards, uh, gala and uh, celebration. What else do, are we going to be doing there? I think that's enough. Yeah, I think that's already plenty. Oh, we will have some music there too. Some surprises. Oh, that's exciting. Yes. But Celebration cannot go without music. Absolutely not. Wonderful. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank Anna. you all. Thank that's you, Margaret. Time. That's it. That's We're... it. Bye. Goodbye, everybody. Bye.